can't get sleep. Waiting, waiting for the sunlight to shine its light on me. Rumble, thanks for the resub. Um, fucking two months, two months. Look at that. Thank you kindly. Um, <laughs> so, who's ready? AFL. Rev's here. Rev picked it out. Rev found it. Karina was there for it. A bunch of you were there for it. Who's ready? I can't believe you fuckers basically talked me into this shit. No promises on how long this lasts. I hate you all. I hate you all. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, woo. I hate you all. <laughs>
Thank you, Premarital. Uh huh. <laughs> Oh, Rev, you did this. You had a hand. I changed life. <laughs> oh, she's sick. Oh, she's sick. I feel you now, my man. Rev. <laughs> oh, say I won't. Say I won't do the uncomfortable things for my community. You guys wanted it. Here it is. Um. Jesus fucking Christ. Why, why, why is that tab completely fucked? Whatever. Uh, El Senpai, uh, Shred 15. Um, this has been a long time coming. It's, it, people in my community have been pushing me for the, to do this for ages. It, welcome to the late night stream. I'm on normally 5.30 p.m., but two days a week I do a, a late night stream for the overnight crowd, the, de the truly degenerate crowd, and the uh, overseas crew. Somebody paid for these. Um, these were, these were fucking paid for and selected by the community. Normally I would not be wearing cat ears. The finger, the fingernail polish is, is normal. Um, but yeah, uh, <laughs> no, just a Canadian dude. Um, Amorous, I hate you. I hate you so much, Amorous. <laughs> Uh, I hate you all. There you go. <laughs> uh, um, thank you, Lady Anne. <laughs> oh, Rev. I broke Rev. I'm going to ice my shoulder a little bit here. I tweaked my shoulder again, fucking lifting some boxes. Um... I've been icing it and ibuprofen and shit like that. But, um, <laughs> for Rev, we broke him. Um, hey, Viva. And, hey, Viva. Oh, God, here it is. I hate you all. Yep. Let me, uh... Yeah, that skirt. I gotta watch that flare on that skirt. Um, thank you, Viva. Re well, the community selected them. The community picked them out. Um, so with that being said, should we go over to the politics section now? Um... This is going to be an interesting night. Karina got it too. Uh, multiple people clipped it. Um, this is going to be an interesting night. <laughs> I can only imagine what this is going to have. Um, oh, Jesus. To continue the testicle talk from the Discord server. Um... Oh, oh! You clip something else. All right. What'd you get? Mm. 
No, you got the you got the the spin. Um, should I start as uh, so you on how long it takes before the first jet? Um, hello, Samantha. <laughs> this isn't my choosing. <laughs> this was done by the community, Samantha. Uh, but it's definitely going to be an interesting night, uh, Samantha, for sure. Um, well, I've just moved us over to the politics section. Um, and this is, if only sponsorship included whiskers. Um, is this one of those coercive elements I've heard so much about? It is. Um, it is definitely a coercive element. I was, I was coerced, damn it. I was coerced. Um, <laughs> it's okay. Um, I'm going to be canceled, but I'm attempting praxis. Oh, Lord. Uh, Sam, good luck. That's all I have to say. Who knows what that means, but good luck, Sam. Uh, Neo, I have to tell you, when I was watching the symposium, I was always relieved when Lindell walked out on stage, non-disheveled with white powder on his dash. Uh, yeah, I did see the uh, the part where he got news that um, the $1.3 billion defamation suit against him was being allowed to move forward and he like ran off stage that was funny um yes the this and the skirt not the community just the cat ears the this and the skirt is all me um kitty cat kai oh dear sweet jesus herman Is this what God would want? I think I think this is God's doing. I think this is this is God's creation. Yes, I I'm made in God's image after all, right? Uh, -huh. uh who? I, I I I don't do the guessing, Sam. But um, <laughs> of course, <laughs> of course. Oh, <laughs> um, big news. That means Dominion will have to go through the discovery process. I mean, yeah. Um, oh, Jesus. <laughs> Jesus Herman. Um, Um, yep, Taliban, <laughs> how am I going to, Taliban, Taliban have taken over more cities than ever today, uh, you know, um, you went to a munch in long johns as leggings and got a little embarrassed with my clearly DIY outfit that I bought stockings yesterday, I need a better set from the sex shop, I need queen size even for my thighs, ah, um, <laughs> Night Motor <clears throat> on the Discord server. Sorry, just had to write Kitty Cat Kai somewhere for posterity. Uh. Um. Hey, skeptic. <sighs> I mean. I don't know how I'm going to move forward. I don't, because I, I, you guys, I don't know if you guys, like, y I think I've shown you before, right? Like, me. Here you go. This is going to, like, do that. But, so, I have OBS as my primary screen. So, I have feedback. I have chat over here, and then I have me in my ears, plus the music. I have the mix down in my ears. And then I have me in front of me. So I'm constantly looking at myself and hearing myself as I do this, as well as referencing chat, right? I don't know how I'm going to move forward seriously when I have to look at myself in cat ears this entire time. I can't, I can't take myself seriously. <laughs> uh... Pastor Kai, her resume now includes feline wedding ceremonies. Um, 
Yeah, and I mean, if you are new, and we aren't joking, we've got 25 ordained ministers in our community. Um, that is a very real thing, and I've been one for like 18 years now. So, yeah, the, the dude in the skirt with the fingernail polish and the cat ears can, can marry you legally. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, we, we legitimately have 25 ordained ministers in our community. Uh, if you go over to our Discord server, um, anybody with a purple username is a minister. Um, and if you see pink, that's a nun. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you see a purple na username on our, our Discord server, minister. Um, what you got in your... P oh, Joe. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, 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 well... Uh, Herman, what we're doing is doing a, a, a ministerial drive uh, every every bad movie night. Every Friday night, I pause or like stop with the movie and like, all right, who isn't an ordained minister yet? So we're doing the, the, the ordination drive every Friday bad movie night. Yeah, like we're, I'm, I'm determined to get an absurd number. Wish I had the nuts to wear nail polish, dude. If you think about it, that's huge balls. Uh, Neo, um, yeah, I get. I mean, yeah, I, it would help if I cared what people thought about me, I suppose. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm just a little too old to give a shit anymore. Um, yeah, like it's just it's just paint on your fingernails. Like I don't understand why it's a big deal anyway. So yeah, whatever. Um. 420 ministers are bust. Rock on. Um, oh, Jesus. Just seeing the Discord ser server. Um, yeah. All right. So, good news. Well, potentially good news um you guys know this is a this is a sore spot for me for whatever for whatever reason it, it really annoys the ever-loving fuck out of my anarchist heart right the britney spears thing like it drives me a little bit little crazy um her stupid piece of shit horrible excuse for a father has stated that he's willing to step step down as her conservator, but he wants to um, he wants to be involved in the selection of the next conservator. Um, <sighs> I'm so sick of that shit. Like I posted a list, like just a short list when I was, when we were talking about this earlier on the discord server about how like Robert Downey Jr. Had a complete drug induced meltdown. No conservator. Charlie Sheen went full fucking Charlie Sheen. No conservator. Randy Quaid went full on cult member. No conservator. Nicholas Cage. I mean, Nicholas Cage. No conservator. Mel Gibson, no conservator. Shia LaBeouf, no conservator, right? Britney fucking has a little meltdown. She sh shaves her fucking head, um, and we're gonna re we're gonna remove her bodily and financial autonomy uh, autonomy from her. We're gonna forcibly implant an IUD to control her reproductive rights. We're gonna take over her, seize her finances, and control them. Tell me there isn't some weird ass misogyny and fucking shit fuckery going on there that's influencing that. No, skeptic, she doesn't. Um, Neo, a conservator is basically somebody, it, it's, it's your owner. It's your owner. It's a legally appointed uh, guardian who has control over a set of things finances, body, etc. 
in Brittany's case, she lost full bodily, bodily autonomy. She lost full financial autonomy. She is not in control of her finances. She is not in control of her own body. They forcibly implanted an IUD in her so she could not have any more children, even though she has always stated she wanted a large family. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Um, it is... It, it, you know, as a human being, it bothers me, but especially as an anarchist, it drives me insane. It drives me absolutely insane. And her her father has made millions of dollars from this because he gets paid something like $12,000 a month or some shit like that to be her conservator. All right. Over the years, he's he's been paid something like two point six million dollars just to be the conservator. And there's something like another two and a half million dollars that is <clears throat> missing. Yeah. Shit like that. He's a fucking he's a parasite. He's a horrid sociopathic parasite who turned his daughter into a literal slave so that he may live a better lifestyle. I I despise that man with all of my being. I don't really care. It, like, Britney Spears was never a thing in my life. Sure, her music was of my era, but I wasn't particularly attached to her or the music in any way, shape, or form. I never... I don't even think I've ever listened to, like, a complete album of hers in my life. But she's a fucking human being. And it is a just prime example of if this can happen to somebody who is rich and famous, what do you think can happen to you? Oh, that's right. The state of Nevada has a problem with illegal or malicious, um, uh, with malicious conservatorships. People will go into a fucking nursing home here in the state of Nevada. There's news articles on this. They'll go into a fucking news, uh, into a retirement home and find who doesn't who may have some assets who who has a uh, who doesn't have kids that sort of thing then they'll just fire file conservatorship papers at the court and fucking railroad it through and the courts just sign off on this shit it's a problem it's an actual problem um and yeah this was done to somebody who was like literally world famous and fabulously rich it can happen to anybody our court system is horrific Um, yep. Yep, Angie, that, that has long been suspected, um, that, uh, Brittany shaved her head to fuck the paparazzi and fuck, um, people who wanted to, like, people who are in charge of her image. Yeah, it, it's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, yes, skeptic. Yes. Um, so does capitalism. Because everybody involved is making a, it, making a cut. And I want that fucking original judge. And then I think there's been a second judge somewhere along the way. I want them investigated too. I want the I want everybody involved investigated. I want their finances drugged through discovery. I want a fucking f a forensic accountants brought in at the state's expense. By the way. At the state's expense. I think the state of California owes Britney Spears a fucking apology. I know that's taxpayer money. I get it. But I think the state should should fund this. It should be on the state's dime. Because seeing as the state of California essentially raped this poor woman. You know. It's the least they can do is foot the bill for the forensic accountants and the years of discovery it's going to take to try and find out exactly how badly that poor woman was fucked. No, no, I haven't, Angie. Plot involves a legal guardian griff. Thank you to enjoy it. I care a lot. Uh, drop it in like somewhere and or dm it to me and just be like hey reminder i care a lot movie that thing um 
I mean, frankly, Viva, I'd even if they're not found of wrongdoing, just participating in those in that case, I'd say you're guilty. Like, how dare you not turn that down? How dare you? Like, there's no. How did that clear the moral? Uh, how did that clear the ethical guidelines? Like, how did that clear any ethical hurdle whatsoever? As far as I'm concerned, if you've been involved in any of the Britney Spears stuff over the years, you should lose your uh, license to practice law. You should probably be in jail. Plain and simple. Oh no, mail-in votes! State of Nevada's been doing mail-in votes for like a decade now. We have automatic um, mail-in votes in this state. Secured, I can track my vote the whole way through. I know when it's mailed to me. I know when I've received it. I know when I've put it in the mail. I know when it's been received. I can uh, I can check uh, whether my uh, ballot has been registered correctly. We have a secure mail-in ballot system in Nevada, and we've been doing it for a decade. Do you trust the other one? Do you trust normal ballots? Because it's the same thing. It's the same thing. It leaves your hand. It goes into a box. Somebody else counts it, and they tally those. That's the same. You have the same trust problem with those. Why is there any difference? Uh, actually, it does, Neil. My, I get issued a unique ballot. Yeah, no, like Nevada's had this figured out for ages. This isn't that complicated. As soon as my ballot is registered once, it's invalidated. And any subsequent submission of my ballot immediately throws red flags. And they're all coded. They're all serialized and coded. Ah, the boxes are made of uncorruptium. That's right, premarital. I forgot about that. Oh, it's my perspective on the OJ case. Oh, for fuck's sake, he got away with murder. <laughs> That's he got away with murder. Exactly redacted. Do you have anything? Do you have any evidence for that claim of Atlanta that won't link me to involve.com or fucking we the people convention.org? Do you have any a county registrar? Do you have like a county registrar um, uh, website statistics published for that information? Not Mike Lindell's cyber symposium where three people were basically present. Yes, maniac. We're doing the fucking cat ear stream. I mean, other than the witnesses saw him leaving the scene, the blood on the gloves and the physical evidence otherwise. No. Uh, you got those votes yet for me? You got that data on Atlanta yet? Um. 
getting a little better at the spin. Getting a little better at that spin. Oh, adorable. Pookie. Nobody cares what you have to say. Interesting skeptic. Hmm, I may have to do that one day. I may actually have to do that. <laughs> nice rumble. Dude, I've been yelling about the fucking Britney thing for years now. It, it pisses me off to no end. They removed a person's bodily autonomy. The court appointed somebody who was given the legal ability to declare her unfit to breed. And they implanted an IUD in her against her will. Uh, I'm sorry, what? Oh. Yeah, skeptic. He's he's harmless. Like now. He's not coming after me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the one sin of this fucking stream is being boring. No, I, no, it's not. That's the thing, Skeptic. It's not. It isn't. That's the terrifying part of that. Oh, God. It's a simple question no one will answer. Uh, which one do you want it to be? Because the bat is the, the wet market. Two of those you're conflating... Uh, two of those you're purposefully pulling apart into two different answers, even though they're conflated into one. Um, the lab, highly unlikely, but possible. But does it matter? I mean, I suppose responsibility at the end of the day, as far as legal uh, settlements go on an international scale, there could be like reparations paid. Um, but functionally, does it matter? Oh, you know what happened. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. So what's your degree in? Genetics? Virology? Infectious disease? Epidemiology? Statistical analysis? Or are you a swing, uh, a swing installer like the last mathematical expert that OAN brought to the fray to talk about the election? No, first I want to know your credentials. Data analyst? What are your credentials? Because you claim to have knowledge that experts don't claim to have. So what 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 level of credential uh, credentialing do you have? That's what I'm after first. Hey, uh, <laughs> not all there, not all there, no thal, uh, no towel there. Either way, thank you for the follow, man. Oh, we're just gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna dodge that. See, you won't answer my question either. You, you whine and complain when nobody will answer your question, but when I ask you a direct question, you completely ignore it and refuse to answer it because you don't have any, do you? Did you graduate high school even? GED? <laughs> Angie, you baiting motherfucker. Oh yeah, it could be uh, fucking Liberty. Yeah. So, how are those credentials? Those you you type in your credentials. What's your level of education? What's your specialty? How do, how are you aware of this? Do you have access to Bill Gates? Do you have any documentation you could release? 
Do you have secure? Uh, do you have secured or time stamped or watermarked or signed documents that provide evidence of this? Because this is, dude, I'll go fucking Glenn Re- Gr- uh, Greenwald on this shit. Send it to me. I can have secure forms set up for you in an instant, so you can send that sh- uh, stuff through in- uh, to uh, through end to end encrypted channels. You got anything? Or all you, or is all you have is conspiracy theory that you're repeating after having heard it on BitChute or DLive? Hey, Skilluru. You've got nothing, huh? It's funny how um, you hold others to a standard that you yourself will refuse to be hold- held to. Funny how that works. I have credentials. I installed multiple swings when we build playgrounds. Neo, look in chat. That's who I'm talking to. Skeptic, when discussing origins of a virus, you need you need credentials. You need to have studied it. You need microbiology. You need virology. You need infectious disease. You need epidemiology. These are not things that you can just spout off about. These are highly technical fields. This isn't being pretentious, saying that you need a level of education. You need a, cer- a level of certification or expertise in these areas. No, this is, you need them. This is like saying, oh, hey, I'm, we're going to Mars. Oh, who's on the team? Like, who's building this equipment? Not just some fucking dude you pulled out of the Home Depot, right? Like somebody who worked at JPL, somebody who's got advanced degrees in mathematics, aerospace, physics, right? Like there are things in this world that it's not pretentious to ask for for credentials for. Just straight up. Oh. So about those credentials, Hollywood. They coming anytime soon? Hey, uh, pity party. Thank you for follow. Um, oh yeah, 17, right? Or something like that. Yeah. Like what about the number 17 Hollywood? The left the left who's the left hollywood seeing as you have no credentials in anything you're speaking about i'll just move past that because clearly you don't have an education so who who's the left just out of curiosity yes yes and i I noticed yes now he's invoking demons and shit too Hey, Prince. Hey, Deirdre. Yeah, okay. Hey, Hollywood. You either start addressing our questions and are like have a conversation and not just talking, or you're going to be removed. Straight up. Either you engage in the conversation, engage in the dialectic, and not just yell, just talk at us, or you will be removed. What are your credentials to speak on the origins of, uh, of the virus? Have you studied it? Do you have first-hand information on this? What you got, Cassie? Oh, Cassidy. Fucking amazing. Okay, so you know nothing about it then. Cool. Cool. You know nothing about it then. You have a business degree. A bachelor's at that. All right.
All right. So you're talking about, you're speaking on a topic you have literally no knowledge of, no schooling, no knowledge, no firsthand information, no studies whatsoever. You wouldn't even know which end of a microscope to look into probably. Okay, cool. So where does this information that um, Bill Gates is responsible come from? Where is, what is the origin point of this information? Do you have first-hand uh, first knowledge of Bill Gates' activities? Have you seen any of these laboratories? Do you have documentation of these things? What is your evidence that you can provide that Bill Gates and other billionaires and the left are responsible for a global pandemic? What is, this, uh, what is the origin of your evidence, if you have any whatsoever? No, no, you got a thousand, you got what, two dozen statements without answering a single question. I'm information technology, man management of information systems, and an independent consultant in IT for years and years and years and years. That's what I do. I'm pretty good at data analysis too, by the way. So there's mine. Where does your uh, where does your information on Bill Gates and the, uh, and other billionaires just just billionaires that's that's all you're you're t saying where does that come from do you have firsthand knowledge do you know Bill Gates have you worked at any of these facilities do you have any docu do you have a document trail that you can rely upon or is all of this tertiary information and hearsay. message from our find you literally linked me an infowars video neo no one not a primary source two not a trusted source three proven misinformation source Aww, Hollywood. Where is your primary sourcing come from? Cite your sources. My lack of, my lack of academic, uh, uh, my uh, because your academic career leaves you, uh, um, good typing by the way, a bit short with the uh, comprehension of facts. Also, amazing punctuation and capitalization. Your vocab is just spot on, man. Um, I can, I can pretty much, I can work with sources. I understand how to properly format a bibliography and how to cite my sources. So again, cite your sources. I think I think I can work my way through, and I have search engines. I can I can look up like a you know a quick wiki how or something on how to read a source list if I need to. And I've got multiple PhDs in my community that I can fall back on if necessary. Um, we we've got at least one professor in the community as well. So. I think I can figure it out. So please cite your sources.
No, Angie. No. <sighs> of course he did. Neo, you have to understand there's more people in the world than you. That's the first thing you have to realize. Second, I was doing something. So just because you ask a question in chat doesn't mean I get right back to you. Is Soros an off-limits topic to me? No. I just think that he's a hilarious boogeyman for the right. That's all. Is he any more or less evil than any other billionaire class? No. Should billionaires exist? No, they shouldn't. Is he responsible for the corrupting, uh, furthering, uh, further of cor a furthering of corruption within our political system? Yes. Is he alone in that action? No. Are millionaires and billionaires across the spectrum of our economy and our society f responsible for those same things? Yes. Is George Soros part of a secret cabal that is secretly trying to coll uh, that, that is colluding to take over the globe and eliminate a segment of the population? Highly unlikely. Oh no! It's not an off-limits topic. Don't jump to conclusions. The world doesn't around uh, revolve around you. Stop being so so solipsistic. Can't apply. There's always individual guilt. There's always individual guilt. Personal responsibility falls to us all at the end of the day. There's societal influences. There's power dynamics that you can analyze using somebody like Foucault. Um, but the truth of the matter is, is that, no, it's a collective class issue. It is the billionaire class. It is the capital class, if you really want to identify it. It's the capital class that is uh, inflicting their will, their power, uh, the unleveled power dynamic against the political class that then manipulates our system in their favor. And there's bleed over between the two, of course. There are billionaire, millionaire politicians and that sort of thing. Told you the ears would put in work tonight. Told you the ears would put in work. Um, I've designed RF equipment for many years, been system architect for transceivers, a signal processing expert, yet these people are constantly telling me how 5G works. Dude, Rumble, I feel your pain. I feel your pain. Beasticle, one of the sets that we looked at had them. Luckily, that wasn't a thing that we did. And I love that fucking Cassidy, like, shut Neo down. Neo fucking sending Cassidy DMs behind the scene. I need to show you something important. It's from the guy who actually created the Vax. Cassidy goes, no, you really don't. My family is full of doctors. I'm good. Um, love it, Cassidy. Viva, good luck at your meeting. Go make the world a better place, Viva. Yeah, I know, right? Beastical, more than likely. I too can yell random words into into somebody's chat. Fucking weak, lame. Uh, Cassie got more. Oh fucking! Oh my god! A giant Bing address too. Holy shit!
Oh, for fuck's sake. Yes, yes, please. Hey, Neo, you want to come on the air? For anything other than porn, Caboose, I know, right? Neo, you want to come on the air with this this exciting expose of yours? This would be amusing. See, I'm, I'm ever so defensive that I'm willing to let you get on the air, right? Oh, you've, you've rattled me, man. Uh, if anybody wants to... Oh, we already had a Cowardly Chud, um, but feel free to mark it if you uh, didn't mark it already on your bingo cards. Sure you will. Sure you will. Wink, wink. Five thirty PM Pacific. Yeah, exactly, James. James is fucking spot on with that though. You aren't willing to expose the global cabal because it's four AM? Wow, such bravery. I you know. It's his icon of fucking... Yeah, it is a sniper in a ghillie suit. Jesus Christ. It is a bit cringe, isn't it? Oh, he watches the indoctrination. He's a fucking... Uh, uh, Neosporin's, a, uh, Neosporin's a fucking Q person, as if we can tell. But Neo's a, Neo's a fucking Q person. He watches the indoctrination. He follows him. Um, hello, level. Yeah, how many years did it take you to figure that one out? Um, Caboose, remember our favorite Q streamer? That's the indoctrination. Hmm, good to know, uh, Rumble. Um, Gothic. Cla actual anarchist, not ANCAP, right? Not a neo-feudalist. So complete. <laughs> if you dismantle the state and allow capitalism to run amok in laissez-faire style, then you've just created a de facto system, uh, system of governance that is more akin to feudalism than anything else. So while there are market solutions that some socialists suggest, that anarchists could possibly adopt. Hey, hey, sunshine. It's been a minute. Um, I don't believe Q just an analog version. Generally speaking, the um, the uh, the economic stuff must be addressed simultaneously with the state stuff. Um, so yeah. Today at the newspaper office, we had an anti-vaxxer say medicine isn't science. Oh, Jesus Christ. Why do we put up with this shit? <sighs> Thank you. It's not a normal thing. The community picked them out. They were bought and picked out by the community. Um, this is, this is, a, this is a treat. This is, I, I promised to do this, so I'm doing it. Um, the only true science is Scientology and baking. Um, baking is a science. Cooking is an art. That's why I'm a cook, not a baker. Um, Uh, actually, Canifly, um, anarchists are, a f are are fond of the saying, there is no project of projects. I can't tell you what a group of anarchists would implement, because that's up to them. It's up to the various affinity groups that form under an anarchistic, uh, or anarchistically styled, uh, uh, anarchistically organized style of groups. I can't tell you what they're going to do. 
Um, if you get uh, a community of, say, 300 people and next door you have a community of 500 people and ways down the road you have like another village of, say, like 250 people, right? All anarchistically organizing. I can't tell you what their chosen systems and styles will look like due to the fact uh, uh, due to the fact that there's individual autonomy and consensus decision making at play. Hence, no project to projects. An anarchist goal, it, as long as they are an anarchist, right? I'm an anarchist, not an ancom, not an ansin, not an ansoch, not an anprim, not okay. You, so, right? An anarchist goal is to teach you the um, the fundamental tenets and core uh, operating modalities of anarchism the uh, the uh, distributed operating modalities the free association and affinity groups the power dynamics the delegation the uh, the how you federate these systems these sorts of things this is what anarchists are about how you utilize those anarchistic tools and that lens of analysis after you are given those tools and understand how to utilize that lens of analysis is up to you because you contain you have that individual autonomy so therefore then the affinity group that you align with may be operating based off of ancom principles maybe they're operating off of communitarian principles maybe they're operating off of a gift economy uh style principles i can't make that prediction and nor would i want to attempt to make that prediction anarchism isn't uh prefigurative like that so there you go Um, rumble consensus decision making which anarchists are huge proponents of yeah um, basically consensus decision making when done correctly um, allows for a single universal veto vote any single person throughout the system that is uh, th throughout the group that is operating um, under a consensus uh, modality um, can veto the uh the movement from move uh from going forward most people who have never engaged in consensus decision making have like that breaks their brain anybody could just veto it yes and in fact it's a highly productive system there are ch uh, there are checks and measures to make sure that there aren't malicious vetoes and that sort of thing and um but yeah um if you want cs.kaisthings.com cs.kais things t-h-i-n-g-s dot com that'll take you to my cheat sheet under the anarchism section there will be a tab for consensus decision making there is an explanation there's like a walkthrough of how you do it as well as a video to, uh, a link to a youtube video um also walking you through it so if you're a visual learner audio audio visual learner you can go to the youtube link if you're um sort of just a text-based learner you can read it for yourself Oh yeah, I noticed that a, a while a while a while ago, uh, Cassidy. Um, I'm gonna put it out there. Um, you come on the air and have a conversation with me, or you get banned. You're boring. You're just here to disrupt. You're not here to actually participate. You're here to disrupt. So either contribute to the conversation in good faith and come on the air and have a conversation with me or get lost. That's your choice. Ball's in your court now. Yes, Beasticle. This is our second try with with anemonym and anemonym. Right? We we tolerated them through all of their hate spewing and their uh, the, all of their insults and their bullshit the other night, and I refuse to allow them to disrupt conversation and engagement at this point. So they either get on the air or they leave. And if they won't leave, see, as they claim to run a pub. They'll understand when they get picked up and thrown out by their tushy. Oh, that's interesting because your phone can run Discord even on a web browser. No, 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 not yet. Not yet. I'm still fucking getting... Um, your phone can run Discord. Um, even through a web browser, it can run Discord. So congratulations. Just because you're on your phone does not mean you can't come on the air with me. So you... Hey, Crickjack! I 
I don't know what that was about, but I just have to pull it premarital. I'm guessing the Chud ran. I'm guessing they ran. Which, I mean, is par for the course with that type of person. They tend to be cowardly. Oh. Oh, I can't imagine why they're not. Pity party. Hmm. Why ever would they? Hmm, interesting. I couldn't imagine it having something to do with them operating in bad faith and just being a fucking troll who has nothing to contribute to basically anything in the world. Uh, Rumble, don't even worry about it. Uh, what would be the anarchist equivalent of representative taxation, i.e. no taxation without representation, would change to... Um, I mean, taxation doesn't occur under anarchistic systems. Um, due to uh, public sh uh, public property and um, share uh, and like the general um, coalescing of public goods and services, so no taxation without representation would convert to. <sighs> no decision making without consensus. No decision without consensus, I suppose, um, is how I would uh, rumble. It's probably where I would go to with that. If I try to extrapolate and convert, yeah, no taxation without representation would probably convert to no, uh, no decision without consensus. Uh, gothic, it generally, it, I don't, I don't debate either. The reason I call them up to voice call like that, Gothic, is because they're cowards. Um, we know they don't, they don't have it. We know they don't want to actually engage in good faith. And so I call them out and say, you want to join me on the air? And they flee. They come up with excuses. They pivot. They disappear. 98% of the people that I actually challenge like that, they disappear. Now, I do have conversations. I do actually do back and forths with people. Um, but by and large, most of the time when I do that, what you just witnessed, it's because I've got a read on them and I'm just going to shut them down. And that's the easiest way to do it. Um. About 250 people level, and then you need to federate the decision making, which is doable. Um, affinity groups of about 250 people is about where you max out. Dunbar's number. Gothic, we have all sorts of people in my community. We've got authoritarians. We've I, I've got a fucking ANCAP neo-feudalist. <clears throat> Um, we've got conservatives, we've got fucking, we've got people on the authoritarian, on the libertarian, on the right, on the left. We are primarily an anarchist, uh, community for sure. We are primarily leftist, but I welcome, we welcome all types. As long as you operate in good faith, it's all we ask. Don't be a fucking asshole. Don't be, you know, and operate in good faith. And I'll have a conversation with anybody. I've had conversations on this channel with, uh, like, literal neo-Nazis. Like, I'm not kidding. Like, literal neo-Nazis with, like, pseudo-fascists, with con classical social fiscal conservatives, um, a Christian nationalist recently. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's what I do. But you have to operate in good faith or else... I'm going to shit on you. Quick attack. I love that name, though. Um, yeah, those ones don't last long. Um, classical liberals. Uh, we do have... we. Uh, no, no classical liberals. Um, I do have a... Ne I have two neolibs on the server, though. Um, gothic... I'm a propagandist. I'm okay with that. 
I'm a community organizer, an activist, and a propagandist. And the only way that I'm ever going to pull people is to have a conversation with them. If the people down at the docks, if the, the proletariat who are the dock workers, who are swearing up a storm and are suspicious of immigrants and are prone to using um, you know, slurs of a variety of types, if you can't engage with them, if, if that triggers you to such a degree that you run fleeing to the hills and you shut them down, then you will never be able to convert them. You'll never be able to like sort of detoxify some of those beliefs. You'll never be able to convince them that immigrants are useful to the economy at the very least, right? And are beneficial um, to our society and are worthwhile as human beings. You'll never be able to have begin that conversation. So, yeah. I'm willing to talk to anybody as long as you engage with me in good faith. That's all. Pity party, five-ish days a week. Um, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 5.30 p.m. Pacific. Uh, Tuesday, Thursdays, 11.30 p.m. Pacific, U.S. times, of course. Um, but I take random days off. I just, you know, like yesterday I took off because I was feeling lazy. I literally had a, I don't want to day. So I didn't. Um, and the notices come through the Discord server as to what's going to occur. Um, thank you, Pity. Uh, balls of obsidian, you got, brother. Ah, uh, thank you, Gothic. Gothic, Gothic, do you want to have a conversation? You seem to be operating in good faith, and you seem to have questions. So, if you want, we can we can get you on, Goth. Oh. Uh, let's see. Can you not do propaganda? Is 100% unbiased speech even possible? No, Amaris, it's not. Um, it's not possible. No. I think even, I mean, even scientific studies have like implicit and explicit bias that sometimes they, you know, you cook, you cook into the research, uh, into the study, into the report that you like, we're accounting for these biases for sure. You can at least account for them, but I don't think it's possible to do that No. Yeah. I mean, it, it's all carrying various biases there, Amaris. <laughs> what Sweden got to be proud of anyways, chair-shaped meatballs. Um, I just took a sip, but okay. Some sort of weird hive mind, probably skeptic. Probably someone, some sort of weird hive mind. That's about the only thing Sweden has going for it. <clears throat> um, uh, no. <laughs> um, level as a reporter i concur people use the assumption that anyone can be totally objective as a way to dismiss things they agree with rather than engaging with the information itself yeah yep uh what do you see the current direction of society as a whole leading us in the next five years i i'm not a i'm i'm, I'm not nostradamus i don't make predictions uh pity i i i really really try not to do that sort of thing um not great though Anthropogenic climate change is uh, biting us in the ass. That's that's my biggest factor. Um, the U.S. is fairly well insulated. We're energy independent. Our economic system is uh, well insulated. Where our trade partners are established, um, Mexico is going to be our labor force. We're going to switch over from a Southeast Asian labor force for our manufacturing production in the next three to ten years something in that territory mexico is going to be the base for that um so 
we're fairly well insulated on, in, in North America. Uh, Canada, the U.S., and Mexico are well insulated for this sort of thing. Um, but anthropogenic climate change and the natural disasters that, uh, that occur along with it, that's, that's the fucking, that's the bull in the room right now, right? Like I, we don't know what that's the deal with that is. We don't know how the po global populace is going to react. We don't necessarily know the economic ramifications of that mid short, mid and long term. Um, I, that's, that's where my eye is as for like what the next five years hold. I could easily see the U.S. just coasting, um, but I could also see us losing our shit. It just sort of depends what happens. The U.S. is one of those places that, like, we're an all-or-nothing sort of country. We um, we we generally don't actually half-ass stuff. We just don't do it. And it's like you know, yeah, we're not doing anything about climate change, really. I mean, really, we're not doing much, right? But if we decided, we'd fucking, we'd go to the moon with it, right? Like, that's the thing. Like, that's how this country operates, is it's sort of an all or nothing scenario. So, if we get on board, we could fucking do some stuff. But if we don't, shit's going to get real. And the populace is going to grow increasingly uncomfortable. The global populace is going to gr grow increasingly uncomfortable. The southern hemisphere of the global populace is going to really take it on the fucking chin with climate change. And so, who knows how they're going to react yeah, it's it's a whole fucking thing. Um, but like I said, I generally speak generally speaking, I don't make predictions. I'm not fucking Nostradamus up in this bitch. And global systems like that are modeling them is nigh impossible. And doing it as an individual is foolhardy at best. But yeah, climate change is the big one that I keep my eye on. Uh, yeah, dude, level. When water runs out, people get weird. When ro water runs out, shit gets real, real fast. Uh, you're welcome, Pity. Um, hey, welcome back, Viva. Uh, do I watch any right-leaning YouTubers or streamers, not necessarily mainstream ones? Gothic, you could reduce that question to do I watch any uh any youtubers or streamers period um i don't okay so here's the deal i don't engage in political spaces um i've had the offers to do panels i've been prompted to do panels i've people want to debate bro me um i don't do it um i don't engage in that my form of activism my form of community organizing is just this right here like right now I, I, I like I, I like the community size. I like the chat speeds. Like we sort of top out at like 115, 120. Sometimes that's like our top end. And it, that's about the limit of me being able to engage chat directly like I am not right now, Goth. Um, I don't really watch other uh, political, like I don't watch BreadTube. I don't watch political streamers. There's only a handful of people and places and things that I watch. None of them are political. Um, if you catch me on a stream, chances are you're going to catch me on Public Loser's stream because I love public. Um, uh, I watch Co Carnage's vo uh, like YouTube uploads from his VODs. I've been a fan and an avid viewer of many a true nerd, John, um, for years and years and years and years now. Um, I've, I've grown up with him to a certain degree. Um, Tom Scott, I, I have known about since he was on the radio. Uh, doing the call, doing the fucking during his college years in Britain, uh, the origin of the technical difficulties uh, with Tom Scott and then the crew, um, Splattercat Gaming. Um, I watch his YouTube videos. I don't engage in those political spaces. It, it just is one of those things. Yeah. So no. Um. <laughs> Viva. Um, yeah, Rev, as far as I know, Kai only watches political YouTubes if we recommend them. That is true. Yeah. Um, unless I'm prompted to watch it, like if the community puts it up on the Discord server or somebody tags me during the show and says, hey, can we watch this? Can we get your reaction to it? Then I'll watch it. Um, but otherwise, no. Hey, Kaz. How, how are you doing, Kaz? Um, No, no, I'm aware of the amazing atheist gothic, but no. Yeah, Kaz, this, 
dude. I mean, Zero paid for him. The community chose him out. This is, I, you know. It's a one-time thing. Maybe I'll do a channel point redemption for, like, Cat Ear Kai for, like, two minutes or something like that. And I'll, I'll put it on limited usage. Um... X is fucking with my head, so also it's my birthday, it's all weird. Aw, Kez, I'm sorry to hear that. <sighs> These are the people's cat ears. They are! They are the people's cat ears. Um, so yeah, I'll, 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 I'll probably put them up for a channel point redemption after this stream. I'll give you one cat ear stream. Um, pity it's, it's kind of a long story. Um, it, I, I used to podcast and do other stuff, right? Like the community came over to Twitch with me, like the OGs, they, they came to Twitch with me. Um, so I, I've, it's. Well, I suppose there's a few people in here um, that have never heard it. Okay, so for years and years and years and years and years, my buddies and I would sit there and get high and bullshit, and we'd be like, why aren't we recording these conversations? Why aren't we, like, publishing them? Because we'd get into all sorts of topics. And we're like, why Why are we... It, the, the long and short of that is, is that because a bunch of us were paranoid as fuck, and we didn't want to, like, be on film. We didn't want our voices recorded. Like, X, Y, and Z. Bunch of paranoid conspiracy stoner types, right? Um, nice, Kez. I love where your head's at, at that one, with that one. Um, so, fast forward a bit. I have, um, I've got a bunch of stuff wrong with me. But one of the things that's wrong with me is idiopathic, progressive, uh, uh, non-length dependent, uh, small fiber polyneuropathy. That was a giant fucking mouthful. Uh, all it means is that my body is attacking my small fiber nerves um, in in all over my body. Um, we don't know why. And the small fiber nerves are the ones responsible for feeling vibrations, cold, heat, and pain. Right? Okay. So this is, this is like, I'm constantly in pain. I'm constantly in pain. So one of the things that it takes, uh, takes the edge off is hot baths. Hot baths right so it's like 5 a.m one morning i'm laying in a fucking bath i'm high as fuck basically i've had a long pain-filled day and i start to have this like panic attack i i start getting into my own head um about you still haven't you still have you've still never done it and I'm, I'm basically having a conversation with myself. I get in the bathtub, I get a little high, and the the you know the the heat helps the the blood flow a little more, activates the the neurons, right? And I'll think of something, or I'll read something, and I'll go off on a tangent. I'll just start ranting to myself, basically, right? And I have this moment. I'm like, this this is the content. Why are you, you still have not done anything? It's been years, like it's been a decade, and you still haven't done shit. If you don't do it right now. You will never do it. I got up out of that bath. I went to my computer. I'm a former, I'm a burned out IT consultant. I had a, um, an XM8500 microphone. I had basic recording gear. I had an analog mixer. I recorded. I recorded the first time. I recorded the first thing. I, I, I started recording and I got on the microphone and I just, I, I remember saying like, I don't know what I'm doing. I have no idea what this is. I don't know if anybody will ever even hear what this is. is. I don't know what it will become. I'm just a dude screaming into the void at this point. Right. And I just sort of unload. I do it again. I resolve to do it again. And again. All right, I'm starting to make a pattern. I'm starting to form a habit. What is this? I don't know what this is, but it's something. I'm doing something. And I start using it as a, as a relief mechanism, as a valve to let go of some of this energy, to let go of some of this pain and suffering, right? And I'm using it to vent. Those early day episodes are very different from what you experience now. 
but I decide that if you do this for a month, you can upgrade some equipment. If you do it to your birthday, you can upgrade more equipment. And if you make it past the uh, make it past Christmas, you can upgrade your microphone. So I made it. I kept going. I started publishing. I started publishing the podcast episodes. I put them up. Put them up on my podcast host, Podbean. And Podbean launches a live streaming service. Audio only, but with call-in features and broadcast, right? It's 1 o'clock in the morning. January 7th, I think. Let's do this. First time ever. Let's take it live. It is Viva. SM7B. It's the best. It's the best. I'm sorry. I adore this microphone. Um, not just because other fucking podcasters have it either, by the way. This is this is actually a quality piece of audio kit. And, fucking, and I've got all the cabling. Everything's top notch, right? Um, anyway. So, I jump online, right? I have no idea what I'm doing, but I'm doing it. I'm kind of notorious for this. I'm an advocate for just doing things. You're going to suck no matter what you do. Your first podcast, your first paper, your first blog entry, your first video, your first performance on stage, you're going to suck. Just accept that. Once you accept that, you can do anything, right? So I jump online, I start going, and I'm just doing my unusual shtick. I'm just doing the unloading, right? And along that process, somebody comes in to... Gothic, hold on to the question and then get back to me when I'm done with this. So somebody very near and dear to my heart. Um, comes into the room. And I'm on some political aside at that point, right? I'm saying something. And this is this is back in the, the Bernie days, right? So I'm saying something about Bernie. And she comes in and she goes, Ew, Bernie. So what's up? I'm looking at chat. And I'm like, what's up? What, what's, your, what's, your, what's your issue with Bernie Sanders? And she goes, well, isn't he a socialist? And I respond with, even if he were, what's the problem? Well, isn't that bad? Call in. Because if you had the Podbean app, you can call in just automatically over the app. It's it's a two-way system. The fact that by the very nature of you being able to listen to me meant you could just call in through the app. Call in. Let's have the conversation. Three hours later... Christina and I end the session. It was formative. It took me back to my early days. It took took me back to activism. It took me back to community organizing. It took me back to being an Occupy organizer, right? It took me back to what I used to do politically. And it made me realize this is the direction. This is the show. This is what you need to be doing is you need to be having these conversations. You need to be available and accessible and a sane touchstone. I know with the nail polish and the cat ears, it's a little difficult to take the, the sanity comment um, straight faced. But I see myself as, as a sane touchstone for, anarchists, uh, for anarchism, right? You may... The only... It, idea of anarchism you may have was given to you by Hollywood and the mainstream media like a dude dressed in all black black block throwing a rock through a Starbucks window right I am the the I am the panacea I am the cure for that right I am the the counterpoint I'm sane I'm reasonable I'm willing to have the conversation and I'm an anarchist to boot right it dawned on me having that conversation with Christina this is what you're supposed to be doing this is the direction right so I, yeah, basically, and that's how I ended up wearing pussy ears. Um, exactly, Rumble. Um, 
I continued doing this on Podbean for a while, but Podbean became an untenable platform for a number of reasons. We've talked about the Podbean wars before. I won't get into them. The OGs know what's up. Um, but I switched to Twitch. And when I came over to Twitch, I brought a few people with me, um, to say the very least. Um, I brought some streamers as well. Um, and fast forward, here I am. Um, the show has, the stream has evolved a little bit. There's been some aesthetic changes for sure, but at its core, it's about the community. It's about you as people interacting with me as a person and us forming an affinity group. We share information, we share stories, we share the good times, we share the bad, right? That was my intent, was build a community. <sighs> There's your answer. I know it was a long one. And it's probably, you probably didn't expect quite that long of an answer. But that's the answer. So, Gothic, you asked me a question. Let me pop your chat. Uh, oh, on S what are my thoughts on SJWs? Woke scolds can go fuck themselves. They're counterproductive. They're harmful to the rhetoric. Um, they kill the dialectical exercise, as it were. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Team jo hashtag Team Joey already won. Um... Oh, pity. No worries. No, I saw that you said that you were avidly listening before. I saw it go by. Um, so, there's the answer. Goofy for fucking Jesus. No worries, Goofy, as you can tell. Don't worry, it's not a rick fucking thing, but the community wanted it and they made it happen. Um... Oh, and Goofy, just FYI, we have 25 ordained ministers in the community at present. Not not in chat at present, but in the community as a whole. We have 25 ordained ministers, Goofy. Um, are you an ordained minister as well? Because if you are, then yes, I need to add you to the list. That makes 26. Okay. Um, goofy for Jesus. That's 26. And a few self-proclaimed shamans. Um, do I play games? Yes, I play games. I do not play games on stream. I've done games on stream two, maybe three times. Um, I do not... Um, I do, I'm not good at it. I'm not good at it. I like to focus and concentrate on the game. I, and I chat and fuck it. I don't, I'm not good at it. Um, I like sneaky, sneaky, stabby assassination type games. Hitman is my series, but Sniper Elite, Dishonored, um, Sniper Ghost Warrior Contracts, um, fucking Deus Ex, uh, yeah, that sort of stuff. That's, that's what I do for video games. Um, if you've got anything with cyberpunk aesthetics, chances are I'll play that too. Um, uh, Kez, 8.30, your time. Um, what time is it in Ireland? 9.05 a.m. Okay, so it's going to be like mid-afternoon or something for me. Um, Kez, if I'm awake, I will stop by. For sure. Um, can I just say I'm a straight male proud ally and I just decorated my laptop and iPad with unicorn tonight so no I don't judge you based on your nails or your ears because I'm proudly listening on unicorn headphones pity I love it I love it um I have James I have played the original thief it did not age well too by the way I might add um I wanted to play Fallout, Game of the Year edition. Uh, it's so cheap on Steam now, unfortunately, I have to save money. I mean, Gothic, I would never, ever advocate for anything illegal. That is against, strictly against terms of service. Anyway. Um...
play ESO and uh, Xbox. I'm a tank. <clears throat> again, Gothic, I didn't suggest in the least that you pirate games. I, again, I would never, ever pirate a game. I would never advocate for anybody to pirate a game. That is theft, and theft is wrong. Of course, intellectual property is, uh, is a, a social construct that shouldn't exist, and even the, fa uh, the father of capitalism, Adam Smith, was against the rentier class in the form of intellectual property. But hey, I would only advocate for and argue that in theory only, of course, never in practice. Um... <clears throat> anyway, um, yeah, you wouldn't download a car. Fucking, are you kidding me? If I could print the car? Yeah. <laughs> um, and, uh, with that, um, yeah. So there's a, there's a couple of fucking rants. Um, all right. Oh God, what the Queen Chudette? What? <laughs> okay, Angie. Uh, okay, so who's redacted? Uh, we go back to redacted. All right. Um. I'm not aware of that square. <laughs> yeah, everyone watching that commercial, yes, I would. Yeah, no, um, 100%. If you could download and print a car, you'd do it. <laughs> Are you shitting me? Uh, <laughs> How should I pronounce your name? Skid it? Skid it here? S skid a. A. Depends on which pronunciation. We're going ecclesiastical or classical Latin, uh, whether it's the ah, uh, the e eh or the eh. Um, but yeah, I mean, should I just say squid? Either way, welcome. Thank you for the follow. Um, Get it here, uh, or even squid works. Okay, duly noted. <clears throat> Welcome, by the way. Um, I was streaming Clash of Clans yesterday, and I got this uh, "want to be famous" bot message. Oh, um, Gothic. Yeah. Um, generally, like those those really hit you when you first start, and if you don't have like um bots and various things set up. Like I run a a, a self hosted bot for the channel. Um, that sort of stuff doesn't happen that often these days. Yeah. They seem to also target brand new streamers. Like, I think after you get a certain level of follows, like, those bots just don't target you. Later, Kezzy! Um. Level, thank you for the resub. Four months, look at the, look at the bootlegger emote. Still bitter, fucking Twitch wouldn't let me have the fucking spittle off that one. If you want to see what the actual bootlicker emote looks like, you can use it off our Discord server. Um. Uh, no, Murdercom, I did not hear that Canada is having an emer emergency election prior to you telling me that one. Um. But. Fair enough. I'm gonna be, uh, I'm gonna be on a fishing boat. Probably not gonna be able to vote. Take work where uh, opportunity comes knocking. I mean that's 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 one way. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I was gonna say like that's because yeah that's that's what we fucking call Angie either Queen Chudette or Queen of the Chuds. Yeah. Um. Oh yeah, pity. Uh Kezzy. Kez. 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 If you're not gone, Kez. Oh the oh the new one. The new one, Kez. Oh. 
<laughs> I, I'm feeling you. Um, either way, take care of yourself, Kaz. Um, hey, without, um, oh, Goofy, like, Angie's actual fucking title is that, um, and Pity, um, if your username does not match your Twitch username on Discord, do me a favor and just let me know. Pity, are you Derek Gross on uh, on uh, on Discord? Sorry. Okay, cool. I'm just gonna add your um, your Twitch username as a as part of your nickname, so fucking I can keep that sort of shit. I uh, keep it straight in my head. So cool. Um, dude, without how the fuck are you not on the Discord server already? Um, and yeah, um, if you're on the Discord server, then you need to click through. Just FYI, you're gonna go to the landing page, um, and you need to click the check mark at the bottom of that, uh, and then you'll get into the rest of the server. Um, so pity and squid did it without, uh, yeah, without and um, pity both need to hit the check mark on the uh, discord on the discord landing page and then you'll see the rest of the server or the parts that you're allowed to see let's just put it that way um all right who wants to do it uh without is asking without is literally asking for mutual aid assistance in the form of a gift sub i try goofy it gets heated sometimes Okay, so without did the check through. All right, everybody's good. Everybody's good. Everybody's good. Um, cool, cool, cool. Kaz, go enjoy your morning music. Hey, Deirdre. Thank you kindly. And there you go, without. Straight up, asking ye shall receive. Um... All right. Well, there's um okay, and uh, I guess I suppose I should do this um while we've got a few new people here. If you are new to the community, um we do bad movie night Fridays. Um after tomorrow night's stream, um basically like about half an hour to an hour after tomorrow's stream ends, um what happens is oh, we're we're close to doing a capitalism apparently. There's a hype train. Um either way we do bad movie night fridays after a week full of shit and horrible news stories and learning about the worst of the worst uh because we do cover news and topics that like that uh we decompress as a community in voice chat we watch bad movies uh and this week um we are restarting the neil breen retrospective we're gonna we're gonna start neil breen for nonsense in some sense and akka and a few others who are brand new to neil breen which is oh to watch neil breen for the first time again um we actually watched uh we watched rocky horror um last week week before week before we watched rocky horror the week before actually goofy yeah um, so yeah, um, if you are new to the community, feel free to join us for bad movie night tomorrow. Um, as always, I recommend that you be stoned and or drunk, whatever, you, you, dr a little tip, a little buzzed, a little buzzed. You don't have to be drunk. You don't have to be stoned, but a little buzzed helps. Um, yeah. So you're always invited. You're always welcome. Uh, yeah, Goofy, we did, uh, we did, uh, what did, God, what did he do? We did, um, Rocky Horror and we did Purple Rain. Without, um, you know, I'm definitely in that category, so I'll take it. Uh, pity, I haven't drank in a long time. I still smoke weed from time to time, especially on Fridays. this fed is pure and sober boy kidding may bring some wine um yeah
Dr. Voss once the sun goes down. Um, oh, yeah, without... I've never made out... We talked about this the other day. Um, yes, I would never encourage you to break the laws of your locality, Pity, whatsoever. Anyway, um, we talked about this the other day without... I actually don't... I've never been made up entirely. Never. I've never done drag. I've never done, like, full... I have no idea what I look like as a woman. Whatever that means. Um, no worries, murder. <laughs> murder gone. No worries whatsoever. Um, uh, without, I tend to be, yes. But honestly, like if you saw me... If you saw this on down, I'm actually very feminine. Um, yeah, so I have a midriff that a lot of a lot of uh, girls and women would kill for. Um, level, I do. I will rant and tell you all about it in a second. Um, but Redacted has done what Redacted does. I have good legs. Um, um, okay, so level, I do play tabletop. Um, I found my system years ago. Um, I play fate. Um, my system is fate. Um, I prefer it. I, I, I like watching people play d and I hate playing d and and I would never want to run a d and game. Um, I'm a fate, I'm a fate GM. I'm a fate player, though it's rare that GMs get to actually play their games, right? Um, fate is tabletop for storytellers, for actors, for theater nerds, for storytellers and writers. That's what fate is designed for. It gets rid of so much of the crunchiness and just makes it so you can tell a cool story. It streamlines that process and creates a system in which telling a cool story is the first and foremost thing that you're supposed to be doing. I play Fate. I kind of like this one too. Pretzels put up a couple bangers tonight. It does, boss. It does. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not shitting on D&D. It's just not my system. It's too crunchy. I know you can strip it out. Um, I know you can strip down D&D. I know you can make it a, a system for storytellers and that sort of thing, but it's not built that way. It's not, it's not built that way. It's not built for it. You have to modify it. Fate is built for it. So literally, it's its purpose, so... It is level. It's so much fun. It's so much fun. Honestly, when I when I first played it, I was like, "Oh, I found my system." I know there's people out there that like like a few different systems, or people that like to change systems and they like to try them all. Um, and then there's people like me. I found my system. Why would I change? Indiana, huh? I DM D and D, but I'm pretty fast and loose with the tiles for a story purpose because my players are always newbies. Fair enough, level. Uh, oh, rules, not tiles. Okay, cool. With the, uh, with the rules for story purposes. Yeah, level. I, I just... Fate is built for it. Fate is built for it. I, I, I think that you should... 
Look, I can make, I can, with enough work, I can make just about any tool in my garage, in my shop, work as another tool. Or I could just use the tool that's supposed to be used. I see it that way. Fate is for storytellers. Straight up. Why should I care how far you can move and how many actions? It's just, it's built for it. I much prefer it. Um... I'm trying to get, we're trying to, we'll see if we can't get, um, Karina's willing to run a game, but we have to figure out, like, we need to, we need people who can commit to it, and we need to figure out a schedule that would work for everybody involved, which is a nightmare unto itself, for sure, um, but Karina's willing to GM, and I am willing to backseat GM Karina until she gets her feet, um, yeah. Oh, level, it reduces, yes, there's still, I mean, there's still prep time, but no, it reduces it greatly. Um, there's what's called the, uh, the fate, uh, the fate fractal or the fate spiral. Basically, once you understand how the, the, uh, like sort of the qualities of something work, the parameters of something, how, how that works in fate, Everything works that way. All the way down to, like, the scene, to items in the scene, to people, to big bads, to characters, to... Once you understand how it works, there's the fate fractal. It all works that way. Yeah. So, yeah, once you grasp fate... <sighs> it's so much easier. Um... Hey, Goofy. It's nice to see you as well again. <laughs> if I'm amused enough, I may give you secrets. Otherwise, you get glitter bombed. Um, so much glitter. I fucking hate glitter. Um. We could do some headlines. Or... Somebody could come on air if somebody wants to have a conversation. Or I can just keep rambling about fate, I suppose. Um, we've had such a nice night, though. I don't think we want to do headlines. That's always a downer. Um, yeah, I don't I don't feel like the vibe is probably there for head, for news headlines tonight. Um, but yeah, we do have new people in community, um, that have been operating in faith. If they want to have a chat with me, I can get you on air relatively easy. Um, depending on how boomer you are. Um, oh. let's see. Let me just check if I missed anything in chat. Beastic, oh, Beastical, uh, Shadowrun was your favorite. Lots of advantages for storytelling, but my DM was more into D&D sessions, unfortunately. Um, see, that's the thing. With, like, Fate, Fate could model Shadowrun without having all that crunchiness to it. Dude, Shadowrun's got huge amounts of crunch to it. Fate could model the Shadowrun world basically instantaneously without all of the numbers. Yeah, <laughs> Square. Oh, as soon as I saw that, I was like... Yeah. Yeah. It's exactly what I expect out of that shit. Um, night level. Take care of yourself. Sleep well. I really do. I think I tweaked my fucking shoulder again lifting some boxes. Fucking cases of heavy ass shit. I fucking tweaked it. Um, I need to be able, I need to be able to like prop up on my elbows and hands and knees and shit for this weekend. Without putting too fine a point on it. <clears throat> um, just starting. Um, I don't know how to say your name. Ejli? 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 I don't. I'm sorry. I'm killing your name. I apologize. Um, if you give me a pronunciation, I'll fix the pronunciation. Either way. Here's what I need to... Um, Ah, eh, no worries, Rumble. Um, 
Uh, Zen, I always run a cyberpunk fate setting. Um, I, I run a world. I have a world. I have a world I run. Yeah, that's... I, I basically exclusively run a cyberpunk setting. Um, so, um, okay, so... Eh, uh, I'm sorry, I'm still killing your name. Ashley, Ashley, I'm sorry. EJ, EJHLE, however I say your name. Um, I have a question for you. How much do you want to read? Like you said, you got Bakunin, so you, you seem to be a bit of a reader. Um, but are you looking for, like, introduction or are you looking for, oh, like, work? Because I can point you in either direction. It doesn't matter to me. I just need to know, like, are you looking to read this or this sort of thing? Like, you know, how how thick of a book are you looking to read? Um, what's up, you French fuck? What up, what up? Uh, just handing out book recommendations here. We'll see if they're still here. Whether, um... So what do you think of the cat ears? They're... Uh, uh, like, the, the shape is bizarre. Like, I'm, I'm a little... Yeah, right? Uh, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, I, I wish that my, my, like... Cat ears are supposed to be, you know, peppy and just... Well, from the side, they're okay, but front, from the front... Oh, okay, so they're uh, anatomically correct. Uh huh. They're not attached right to the to the head uh, band thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like this. Okay. So, um. Okay. So introduction first to get used to it and dive in. But later on, I'd like to look at more hardcore stuff. Okay. So here's where you start. Um. The government of no one. Uh. By Ruth Kinna. R U T H. K-I-N-N-A, the government of no one. This is going to, Ruth is going to walk you through various people, history, different uh, ideas and philosophies contained with uh, within uh, anarchism uh, from old to some fairly current stuff. Um, she'll walk you through various concepts um, and, and that you're going to need to know to understand anarchistic concepts. Um, so start here. The government of no one by Ruth Kinna, as you can see, it's about yay thick. All right, but you did say that you'd like to look at more hardcore stuff. <clears throat> Demanding the Impossible, A History of Anarchism by Peter Marshall. This is where it starts to get real, all right? Um, this, is, this is not complete by any means. He is Eurocentric. Um, he does cover some South America. He does cover some, but he, this is largely Eurocentric. Um, so tell you what you, um, you finish this, come talk to me. I will be able to, uh, I will take care of you from there. I will get you, um, what little African anarchism there is. Um, I will get you Chinese. I will get you Korean. I will get you Japanese. I will get you South American, which is a rich fucking history of anarchism. Um, so but yeah, start with Ruth Kinna, uh, the government of no one, and then go on to Peter Marshall uh, demanding the impossible. Um, yeah, that should that should get you off to the races. Um, so let's see. Do, do you ever think we'll be able to reach a point where it will become socially incomprehensible to bias others based on sexual preference or culture, but rather on their individual actions and behaviors as a whole? Pity, I sure hope so. <laughs> um, uh, Beasticle? There is one for that, actually. Beasticle said you should have a channel point rede redemption for you reading a passage from anarchist literature. There is actually one for that. There is a reading from. It's not necessarily from anarchist literature. You're free to make your own selection. Um, but yeah, uh, Beasticle, I do have one for that. Um, let's see. A bunch of people like the cat ears. A bunch of people love the cat ears. Um, <laughs> yes, pity. It is a thick book. Um Let's see. Oh, my wee blood is suddenly interested in Japanese anarchism. Ah, uh, Beasticle, I can get you the book. Um, but yeah. All right. So I'm caught up on chat. So uh, what time is it for you, Frenchie? Uh, 1030. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, oh. Alex Jones here. We're doing AJ. Proudly radical. 
Since I owe Kai a few favors from back in the old days. Uh, shit, I probably shouldn't talk about that. Wait, why are you still recording? Fine, fine. Just be sure to edit it out. Anyways, as I was saying, well, this is Alex Jones, and I just wanted to teach the proletariat a few things about anarchism. Anarchism isn't about chaos. In fact, it's quite the opposite. Anarchism is about the people. It's about solidarity and mutual aid. It's about removing unjust authority and hierarchies. We should all be anarchists. The world would be a better place. Now, I'm going to apologize again to all those parents whose lives I ruined because I'm such a douchebag. Jones, out! All right, guy, this has got to make us even for that, uh, incident you helped me out with. <laughs> um, so, let's see. It would be, you're in the morning. That means it's Friday for you as well. Um, so what's your day have in store? You got any classes today? Oh, no, it's the, the vacation, like summer vacation. And I, I'm going to quit. Like, I need to properly, like, basically, the... I only have a contract for the year, so I'm I, I've been fired technically. Huh. You bet. And, um, You've been well, released. Been released. Yes. So I I don't have to to continue working for him. I just need to find the courage to say, all right, my mental health is degrading, and I can go on. So <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Um. All right, who 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 redeemed this? Somebody redeemed this. Uh, Square, <clears throat> Square redeemed a reading. Um, all right. Uh, let's see. How far into this do I wish to read, and where should I start? Um. Okay, we'll do that. Oh. <sighs> Uh, Kai, Kai reading voice kicking in here too. As, as people have pointed out, I do have a different reading voice than my normal speaking. Uh, we're going to be starting in chapter three, practices. Um, how have anarchists devised their educational projects? How have they tried to spread cultures of non-denomination, and how does anarchist action relate to anarchy? To respond to these questions, I will look at two big debates, one about organization and violence, and the other about class and intersectionality, and then explore the possibilities of anarchy in action. In the late 2000s, despondency about the emergence of protest tourism in seemingly ill-defined mass, mass action sparked a call to give up activism. Anarchists should focus less on the aesthetics of militancy and redirect their attention to effective targeted actions. While this critique of anti-capitalist social justice campaigning struck a chord with some anarchists, the pejorative use of activism was highly unusual. For activism is rarely linked to specific types of action. Indeed, in a general sense, it captures the moral drive that runs through anarchist politics. Anarchists, are, uh, anarchists see inaction as compliance. In Lucy Parsons' words, passivity while slavery is stealing over us is a crime. Describing her own journey to anarchism, she dismissed the idea that material barriers to anarchist changes would melt away or be voted or prayed into nothingness. Crumbling they may be with their own weight and the decay of time, but to quietly un stand under until they fall is to be buried in the crash. Um, <laughs> as will become clear, her oblique reference to the rocks that had to be removed, coupled with her refusal to say precisely how this should be done, has given anarchists plenty to discuss. But the commitment to act, activism, is not one of the topics. As, rea as reality now, a zine that came out in the 1980s, Ottawa punk scene put it, there are many ways to struggle against fascist control, and there's not only one way in which we will overcome fascism, but if we don't struggle for change, for balance, each in our own ways, then the choices we are left with are personal betrayal or death. Oh, turd. Um, I would never read Carlin's brain droppings just because Carlin did the audiobook for Carlin's brain droppings, and it is a masterpiece. 
two dramatic moments in 19th and 20th century history deeply influenced anarchist ideas about activism and violence. The first was the wave of killings and high-profile assassinations perpetrated in Europe between the assassination of Tsar Alexander II in 1881 and that of Archduke Franz Ferdinand in 1914. These events have become milestones for the period of propaganda by the deed, or propaganda of the deed is how my school of anarchists came up referring to it. But the second was the outbreak of the First World War and the Bolshevik takeover during the Russian Revolution. State reactions to propaganda by the deed prompted anarchists to reflect on the effectiveness of their activism, while the war and revolution led them to reassess the legitimacy of violence. Um... Yeah. Mm, if you, yeah, I don't think you do get it actually, Sven. <laughs> really don't. Um, so, I mean, I could, I could, I mean, I could easily just keep going and going and going, but that is there. That's your channel point redemption. Um, square, square. Uh, um, well, I mean, if somebody if somebody wanted me to read tent poles, then you'd have to fucking do a point redemption for it. Um, but if uh, somebody wants to actually just do the uh, read the tent poles, then there's tent poles in chat. Um, I mean, to the new person, they should read it. Then, yeah, I mean, there's there's the tent poles that we're talking about. That's that's an essay I wrote. Um, anyway, so what are you going to do, um, if you stop, well, when, not if, it sounds like you're already committed, what are you going to do when you stop teaching? Um, that's a good question. I'm trying to, to go back to, to actually making games. Um, I'm going to try and stream, and, uh, I don't know, like, for well, now, I'm, <laughs> I'm doing mutual aid for, um, the Twin Rabbits. Who is in another logo? So I'm tinkering with that at the moment. All right, rock on. Um, <laughs> thank you, thank you, Foss. Um, yeah, I, I, I actually, yeah, the ten poles essay, I'm, I'm quite proud of. It's a solid fucking essay. I think it, it, that's good work, put to paper, paper. Um. So, I mean, I know you started, like, your, you did your first stream last month or something like that now. Um, are, what do you, well, are, what do you, um, meta paper, exactly. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you got a game project you're working on? Uh, right now, I'm, I'm trying to, to get back my, like, what, what, what's the land legs? <laughs> yes, um, yes, sea legs, sea uh, legs. Sea legs, yes. yeah. Well, yeah. it goes either way. Um, with uh, like trying to do a small scale VN project, a visual novel for, for those of you who don't know. I have like a few uh, ideas for something I should do. I have a uh, like solid concept for a management game that is inspired by a theme hospital. I have one more like narration of uh, oriented type walking simulator that is more um, like up my wheelhouse in terms of skill. And I, I have this sh uh, shoot them up. I'm trying to get back to working because I have friends that are like, it was supposed to be a short project, like started like six months ago, but the, the programmer was out of pocket for most of that, and I lost steam. And I and again, my mental health started degrading from there. So, yeah. All right. Well, fair enough. I mean, it's as comprehensive of an answer as I'd expect. Um, yeah, Redacted was saying that they were helping you make decisions for models in a stream you were doing. Oh, you know what? Let me pull that. Um, yeah, if you if you actually, you know what? You know, it'd be a really good stream idea. Beginning to end, making a game. Uh, 
Why not? Step one, like literally like work with who's in your chat, like figure out what you guys want to do, like workshop it, brain, brainstorm the ideas, figure out what you're comfortable doing, like put some ideas forward, but get the sort of the group project mentality going, figure out a game that you're, you're capable of making. Don't do a huge fucking project, but literally from idea to finish and all of those steps in between that it takes to make a game. And if you export those videos over to, if you export the VODs over to a YouTube account, so you then have that episodic nature of creating a game, dude, that's great content. That's, that's rewatchable. That's educational. That's entertaining to like certain people like that. That'd be a great series. You know what? Rock on. Um, Pity. Um, yeah, it also, yeah, you could get some, yeah, like, yeah, there's multiple people saying that that'd be super cool, man. Like, seeing a game made live from beginning to end, like, the coding, the modeling, like, all of the stuff that goes into making a game in the, the, the current context, like people, I don't even like, I've never been a game programmer. I've never been a game designer whatsoever. All of my stuff was like cryptographic and file utility and like that sort of stuff. I don't even know what it takes to make a game. And I would be fascinated. I'd watch those episodes. I'd be like, well, fucking, you know, I mean, I'll tap in for the live streams, but I for sure would watch those VODs. They'd, they'd make it into my playlist for sure. Like, what, what the fuck does it take to make a goddamn game these days? Like, yeah. Yeah, do that. Yeah. Fuck it, we'll do it live. Exactly. Um, yeah, uh, Viva said they'd watch it. Fucking, it, like, there are multiple people um, who who are down for this, this sort of thing. Um, and Pity, I, look, <clears throat> Pity, I, I, I've... I've considered doing audio readings like on my website. I, there's even a section for like stuff to come. I've done a, a reading of like some of my grandfather's writings here. Here's the, Hey Duchess, um, the four, dra the four twenty dragon from Texas, I suppose. Um, I one, I would have to read like public, uh, public domain stuff, right? Like, I'm not getting into that copyright bullshit. IP stuff is bullshit. Or two, I could just read my grandfather's writings. My grandfather was unabashedly just, like, seriously, no ego attached to this. He's another dude just because I happen to be related to him. He was a fucking genius, like, terrifying genius. Like, engineering, computer science, mechanical engineering, 12 languages from Navajo to Hebrew to Spanish. Um, like, he taught himself Lithuanian like straight up like the dude was uh, and also basically every musical instrument that you could fucking pick up he could play he's a terrifying man just fr from an intellect standpoint so of course he wrote as well um so i have all of his writings um or at least as many as that could be collected upon his death um so i could read those i could do audiobooks of those but it, it feels like people would w m want more um, than just my grandfather's writings. They would want something like anarchist literature because that's kind of what I'm known for. Um, I don't know, but I have considered doing it before, for sure. Um, <laughs> I'll take you reading a newspaper at this point. Mm, duly noted. Um, Chris, it, it's, I am a, a pale shadow compared to what that man was. Um, you can see it, though. Like you can see the the lineage from him that you're like, there's some of the musical talent, there's the technical talent, there's the language talent. Like it, it sort of got distributed across the, the kids and grandkids and stuff. It's really weird to look at, um, look at the like family tree and be like, oh, so you got his musical talent. It's like, oh, you got the languages. Yep. You got the technical skills. Yep. Yeah fucking fascinating how that worked out i i have dude genes are weird <laughs> that's got nothing for it i know environment counts for a shit ton but oh you know yeah it's fucking weird 
Uh, several game devs in science and technology category, but not seen anyway, do start to finish on stream and include chat. It's usually something they're working on. They hide aspects of it from stream. Yeah, I'm telling you, dude, like that's a solid idea. Like that's it, uh, that could catch on easily. If you it, like, I understand there's certain things that you'd have to make like, you know, you'd have to make calls on that, like, okay, we're doing it this way because this is what I'm comfortable doing or capable of doing or X, Y, and Z, right? But if you included your community in a lot of the decision-making to make a sort of, like, crowdsourced game like that and, like, do it live on stream from inception or from conception to inception to completion... That would be a that would be a unique project, yeah. Like I I don't know if anybody has done that even. Well, then I too late too to wait because uh, next month I'm going to be with Momo. Um, but yeah, definitely when I come back, um, like it's a little hard because people are very shy. Uh, they they don't feel like their their opinion matter or that they they, they have a cre creative in input like I really need like uh, the character I showed on uh, on in chat I really had to to uh, like pull from chat okay, what do we want what uh, uh, like giving them options and um, suggestions to, to pick from uh, although they like very rapidly they asked for a a fat rat, and that was very cute. Well, I mean, some of that though is just compu uh, community organizing. Like that's that that falls to you to be able to empower those people in your community and be like, yeah, like I, I know you may feel that way, but it's super important, even for the lurkers, even those that feel that like you may not be video game players, you may not be into this, this sort of thing. Your ideas are valid. Your creativity is valid. Like that, that sort of falls to you as a community organizer at that point to empower those people. Uh, Lana Lux does lots of chat collaboration dev. Well, there's a name I don't know, but good to know. Um, yeah, and yeah, that iterative development process using like your community, that could be really unique. You could get some interesting features out of that like that that people could dude people are creative you could get something actually fascinating out of that yeah this is so um and somebody said um oh sven i didn't get the language talent I got no talent for the languages. Um, the, the, the talent for the languages went to the other side of the family. Uh, it went to one of my cousins. Um, yeah. One of the cousins got the musical. One of them got the, the, um, the language. I got the technical and engineering stuff. Um, one of my formative memories. Um, One of my formative memories is him taking me out back to his um, his shed, and we built um, Morse code uh, Morse code um, transceivers, like transmitter and receivers. Like we we just built them with shit in his back, like in his back shed, and we just strung a wire up and we fucking you know did it did it to each other. It was fucking amazing. We did that in an afternoon. It was it was a formative experience for me as a human being that like, dude, like electronic communication devices could just like, here's a piece of plywood. We'll screw the pieces to it. Like, let's cut the we'll cut the plywood squares out or rectangles out and we'll fucking, you know, we'll just all you need is this and this and this. And you just you can put it you can just assemble it. And I was like, you can just build stuff. Right. Like I was always curious. I was always taking stuff apart, but he taught me in an afternoon that just a dude in a shed can build stuff. I, you know, yeah. It's a formative moment in my, my like childhood development. So my, my grandfather teaching me that, yeah, all this stuff you see, some dude just sat down and built it. It's how we got all of this and you can do it too. Anybody can. Yeah. Oh, hey, Tony. 
uh, it's okay. Look, the com- this is no Tony. No, <laughs> no. Um, Paid for and selected by the community. It's been a long time coming. I promised I'd do it. Here it is. We're doing the cat ear stream. Um, so, no. <laughs> um, but, yeah. Yeah, exactly, punk. Fucking exactly. Um, once you learn the materials in their properties, anything can be DIY. Um, yeah, yeah. A dude in a shed built a functioning nuclear reactor. That is true as well. Um Let's see. <laughs> what are you talking about? This is Kai's persona. Yeah, yeah, let's, let's, no. <laughs> it's just, no. Um, <laughs> um, so, um, fucking douchebag. What's his, what's his fucking name? Uh, num, 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 you were, uh, you were you were you were unbanned like you were untimed out nobody banned you you were you were timed out and you were untimed out immediately okay so one let's knock the victim complex off and two now that you're back this still stands either you get on the air with me or you get banned so now that we know you're back the offer has now been put out you either get on the air and have a conversation with me or you get permanently removed from this channel. So there you go. Or you or you run off and do your cowardly thing and pretend you were you were banned and then you show back up, show up another time. But I will tell you right now, if you do not respond to this, I'm banning your account as well. So, silence. Cool. They said ban me. I told you I'm on I'm on my phone. So I banned him. Um you are no longer welcome here. You are a pain in the ass. You are a disruptive element. We put up with you yesterday. I refuse to do it again. That was your option. Get on the get on the air with me and talk. Or you get banned. You refused. So, bye. Go find somebody else to annoy. Um. Oh, and grow the fuck up. Stop being such a little punk bitch. Anyway, so yeah, that was that was that. Um. Fucking. Yeah, and not was lost, but a meat bicycle. Um. Is, uh, that's not a bicycle. That's a girlsicle. <laughs> uh, there was a reddit thread that was amazing um what is the worst u.s state and why literally over a hundred thousand votes for multiple multiple comments all right i tallied them over a hundred thousand votes all mississippi like literally everybody agreed mississippi mississippi is the worst u.s state M I S S I S S I P P I. Oh, we do we do a different pattern. M I S S I S S I P P I. Um, you would have expected Florida. Um, well, it, see, it, well, it's because of a bunch of stuff. It's because of education. It's because of mortality rates. It's because of poverty rates. It's because of like food access. Like literally, people people put up really good arguments as to why it's Mississippi. Like Mississippi's the worst state. Um. Oh, Yogi Wan probably. Yeah, lots of people love Florida for some reason. Um, Nina Simone said it best when she said Mississippi. God damn. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, and uh, along those lines, Mississippi asked for a uh, fucking military hospital ship. Uh, Mercy and I forget our two hospital ships names. It's Mercy and something. I forget the other one's name. I know Mercy. Um, they asked for uh, a military hospital ship with ICUs uh, because uh, uh, they said that they're like days, five days away from a hospital collapse due to COVID. 
Yeah. Comfort. Comfort. You're right, Crystal. It's mercy and comfort. Um, thank you, Crystal. Um, yeah, mercy and comfort. Um, and yeah, they're five days away from fucking, like, completely overwhelming their hospital networks. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's gonna just shut the fuck down. Oh. Uh, oh, oh, did everybody, did anybody, did anybody, I should say, uh, did anybody see the fucking San Diego Police Department's prop, a uh, cop, a uh, copaganda film of fucking they okay so they released this video of one of their officers overdosing on fentanyl because he came into contact with it on a bust oh it's fabricated yeah no. the, the, the police wouldn't lie the police lied y'all i know uh, 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 say then so say then so <laughs> Yep. Yep. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Few people know about it. Fucking Deirdre. God, yes. Fucking Cricks said that was BS. It never acts that fast. Um, yeah. It was, it was like they, and even the young Turks fucking called them out for it. Like, yeah, that was bullshit. <laughs> uh, uh, I just came to this motherfucker to tell everybody y'all are loved and have a great fucking night. Stay dangerous, TTV. Uh, good message. You as well. Um, the point, Caboose, uh, the point was to, it was copaganda, right? It was copaganda. It's that's typical shit. Our job is dangerous. We're the front lines. We're trying to save the people from the evil drug war shit. Um, and look at the cost to our, our brave young men in blue, right? It was supposed to be that sort of thing, only... Whoopsie. Um, Cassie, yeah, I could tell it was fake. You don't know D from getting it on your skin like that. Like, it was... Dude, I, I've got, like, I think I've got the, like, Young Turks fucking breakdown of it somewhere around here. Hang on. But, yeah, the video originally... Yeah, here we go. Copy. Make sure we get this open. Uh, oh, there we go. Paste and go, paste and go. Um, yeah, here. The San Diego County Sheriff's Department recently released a video claiming that one of their deputies had suffered from a fentanyl overdose simply by being in close contact with the drug. Now, he didn't consume the drug. He didn't, you know, I don't even I don't know how you consume fentanyl. I got to be honest with you. Well, but it's three ways. The best would be, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but the point is uh, during his policing duties, he came into contact with it and then he suffered. He had an overdose and it was a scary experience. Let's take a look at that video and then I'll tell you what actual professionals and health experts had to say about it. It's okay, just focus on your breathing, okay? Okay, so right out of the gate, right? This is this is how the San Diego Sheriff's Department fucking releases the video. They do the fucking black screen with the, the ominous white text. On July 3rd, 2021, a patrol deputy with the San Diego County Sheriff's Department was exposed to fentanyl while processing drugs at the scene of an arrest. The deputy nearly died after the exposure. Focus on it. I need Narcan. I'm Corporal Scott Crane from the San Diego County Sheriff's Department. My trainee was exposed to fentanyl and nearly died. It was our first radio call of the day, and this was uh, Deputy Five Eyes' radio call. He found a white substance that he suspected was drugs. Yeah, I don't, yeah, it's, it's a powder. Um, it could be cocaine or fentanyl. It, it tested together. positive yeah. for fentanyl. Yeah, that stuff's no joke, dude, it's super dangerous. I was like, hey dude, too close. You can't get that close to it. A couple seconds later, he took some steps back and he collapsed. Ran 
amazing. <laughs> he just fucking. And I <laughs> took some steps back, and he collapsed. Written and directed by Neil Breen. I ran over him, and I grabbed him, and he was Odin. And I went to my trunk, and grabbed the Narcan. Wait for it. To him, I grabbed him, and I, I did one nasal spray in one nostril, opened the other one, another nasal spray in the other one. Uh, point of order, at no point can you actually see him use the Narcan. He, at no point do you see, like, even if I pull, like, I know, like, I was sort of, like, covering there. Here, you can, you can watch. Went to my trunk. Hey, snappy. the Narcan. Came down to him, grabbed him, and I, I did one nasal spray in one nostril, opened the other one, another nasal spray. And yeah, you notice the camera goes right down as y you would be depressing the plunger, but nope. The other one. I need Narcan. I got you. I got you. I'm trying to not let him go. Like I'm just. I wanted him to know. He wasn't alone. <laughs> it's an invisible killer. He would have died in that parking lot if he was alone. Fire department got there, put him on the gurney. His eyes rolled back in his head, and he started to OD again. And he was ODing the whole way to the hospital. Two doses of Narcan after incidental fentanyl exposure, and he continues to overdose all the way to the hospital. I don't think people realize the severity of just how deadly it really is. I'm Deputy David Fivey, and I almost died of fentanyl overdose. <sighs> um, so... so bad there are health experts who have waited on this and they're like no that's that's not what happened which is why i'm i'm listen i i don't know what happened to that deputy okay mm -hmm. it seems like he it yeah, yeah, yeah focused on it overdose a couple hundred signed an online petition Yep. Medical professionals have pushed back saying there is no evidence that incidental contact drugs coming in contact with the skin or through inhalation with fentanyl can trigger an overdose. A couple hundred signed an online petition calling for the retraction of the video and the news coverage that focused on it. Signs of fentanyl overdose. That's why the, sh the sheriff uh, backed it up. Um, fuck it. The nocebo effect could explain what's going on in this incident, said Dr. Ryan Marino, medical director of toxicology at University Hospital in Cleveland. I can say from watching that video, he is not having an overdose. <laughs> it is just so fucking bad. It's just like, oh, Jesus Christ, guys. Um. Uh, <sighs> Yeah, no, it's and, and Viva mad mad props for the X Viva. Um, I like the, the the reference to the nocebo effect. Like, yeah, we can explain that away by saying it. Like, well, it, it is not faking. Is it just thinks he's overdosing? Like, yeah, yeah. Like plausible deniability and shit. Like you like. No, no, dude. <laughs> I've seen better acting in Neil Brin's movies. Yeah, they knew what they were doing. That was, they literally dramatized it, right? Like, if, if, if this were just raw footage that somebody managed to get their hands on, maybe, maybe you could sell me on the nocebo. Right, so everybody knows, nocebo effect is basically perception of something and then you acting upon it, right? Um, so maybe you could sell me on it. The sheriff's department took this high quality footage, stitched it all together in a tightly edited package, put fucking emotionally driven music behind it, had the fucking like quality, uh, like high quality production value goes into this, right? This is propaganda. That's what this is. This is propaganda. Fuck you. Uh, 
Uh, looks more like a seizure like my cousin would get from her epilepsy. Um, yeah, it, it honestly, like many people. Hey, <laughs> Caboose, I came into this community hating cops, and I'm coming out of this community really, really, really hating cops. Um, yeah, um, I, I actually do think it was that, Zen. Um, it looked like one of those awkward training videos. Honestly, yes. Yeah. I, I think it was fucking hilarious, though. Um, Pity, thank you for stopping by. Welcome to the community, Pity. Um, if you happen to be around tomorrow night for Bad Movie Night, you're more than welcome to join us. It will be a doozy of a couple of movies. Um, but yes, Pity, lovely to meet you. Thanks for stopping by. Um... Yes, fucking brain. Uh, the video is indicative of something more important, and that's that the police are so accustomed to their bullshit being accepted. Yeah, basically. Um, I don't cry. Oh, yeah. Yep, yep. I know that one. Yep, Rev. Um, <laughs> I feel bad for the cop. He failed in acting class, and now he failed in the police acting group as well. Um... Take care of yourself, Pity. Get some sleep before you have to work. I know you got to be up in like a minute. So get get, get a minute of sleep there if you can. Um, Corporate Avenger for the win. Oh. Uh, Speaking of bad movies, uh, have you uh, seen uh, Fire and Ice? Mm. <coughs> no. It's the like oh. a very pretty animated movie yeah, with maybe, a yeah. very dumb <laughs> and. and I think an intentionally I've, gay uh, plot. Yeah, I've seen pieces of this over the years. This is rotoscoped, right? Yeah. I've seen clips from this. I've never actually watched the full movie, though. Hmm. Well, there's a half-naked dude in a loincloth. All right. I'm in. Oh, there's, in. there's a bunch of them. Um... Yeah. You also have Batman in the long cloth. All right. All right. Um, <laughs> I'll save that link. Um, interesting. Yeah. The fucking. All right. Uh, it's all right. Yeah. Maybe I'll give that a watch. No summer stock for him. No, nope, no summer stock for that cop. That cop doesn't, it doesn't get fucking, uh, he doesn't get a call back. Uh, Maniac said, is that with the dragons? Um, I think so? Uh, there are a few dragons, yeah. riders, but uh, the, the plot is thus. There's this evil prince who just moves glaciers by just coming in his pants. It's weird. Uh, that goes on the attack against the Fire Kingdom, well, where there's noble king that has, like, a, like, lives on top of a volcano is apparently very good and, and cool. And um, so the the orcs or the I want to say the uncannily Semitic um, hordes of olive skin men um, <laughs> uh, kidnap the the king's daughter, and uh, thus begins a, a quest to to rescue her from the the clutch of the evil ice prince. Who has a very, very nasty mother, by the way. But he's fabulous. It's okay. All right. I'll give it a look. Um, okay. So apparently Sven is saying that these are good cops from Norway. Um, fucking that thug. Kai thug uh, emote still. I don't even realize it's me half the time when I look at it. Um, all right, we'll, we'll, we'll give it a look. It's four minutes for 443, something like that. Oh, 
sånn, nå sitter du, sånn som jeg snakket med deg om, nå sitter du ja. ordentlig. Ja, ok. Opp for deg. Ja. Ikke dra på deg noe mer enn nå. Nå skal du inn til oss, og så skal du sove ut russen. Ja. Ikke dra på deg noe. Nå har ikke noe russ! Nei, men det... For helvete! Men det... For helvete, sprodet! Så, får du, du får... så jakta på du, meg! Får du ikke gjort noe med? Hele forbannet tida! Ja, men det får du ikke gjort noe med, ikke sant? Det er rett, ja. Så jeg prøver å fortelle deg nå at ikke du drar på deg. Det blir så forbannet! Nå kan du høre hva... Fordi helvete er forbannet! <laughs> Ja, ja, for bare bli så forbannet du vil, bare oppfør deg. Du er litt morsom. Viva, no such thing as good cops, same as saying virgin horse. Hva skjer nå? Du skal inn til fylleresten, du. Har du hørt det før? Alene? Ja. Ok, all right, first. I don't want to I don't want to come off like a, a horrible, horrible American and like some sort of like ethno-nationalist or something, but I'm, I'm just... Okay, can we listen to that, whatever that dude, whatever the cop said, just a second ago. Hang on. Du skal inn til fylleresten, du. Har du hørt det før? Alene! Hørt det før? I'm sorry, this is like a fucking Muppets episode. Like, this is this is straight up like the Swedish chef shit. Hurt the bird, the dirt, the bird. Like, it, it just, I'm sorry, it's the first thing that popped in my fucking head was, like, the Muppets. Ja, du får ikke med deg noen inn der, vet du. Til fylleresten, du. Har du hørt det før? Alene! Ja, du får ikke med deg noen inn der, vet du. Og så skal du få... You cannot convince me that's an actual language. <laughs> it's like Dutch. It's in that category if it's like, I know people tell me it's a language, but I have my doubts. So what are you picking, man? Ja, ja, den er ikke den henger vel på, håper jeg. Så da skal jeg håper du, du får med deg det som henger fast i kroppen. Ja. Men faen ikke, men ti timer når du skal kåle på meg. Nei, vi skal ikke vente. Vi setter deg i resten, altså når du er frisk. Det var to til vi gang, da! Vi fyller resten! Jeg vil faen ikke ha det! Det blir tre, tre timer nå. Hallo? Hvorfor roper du så høyt? Da har faen ikke du noe med! Det er bare en hesku! Pastique said, uh, hey Pastique, the Sims meet Star Wars. <laughs> jeg skjønner det er lett, men... <laughs> Svarer. <laughs> roper du så høyt? Da har faen ikke du noe med! Det er bare en hesku! <laughs> jeg skjønner det er lett, men... <laughs> Svarer. <laughs> Sånn. Du har tempet meg. Ja! Men du må styre... Jeg gjør følge opp, faen! Ja, følge opp! Men du må styre temperamentet ditt! Ikke vidt. Du, nå sparket du meg. Å, oh, herregud, det er så pyse! Nei, men jeg sier... Du er pyse! Jeg er ikke pyse. Du er for mange pudding. Du er pudding! Er det det? Ja, du er. I do enjoy that the partner is getting a good laugh out of this as he's picking on his other partner. Like, you're a fucking coward. <laughs> the cops laughing it off. So... Ja, ja. Det jeg ønsker fra deg nå, nå skal det ikke være noe som helst spark. Agris. Eller sånne ting. Nei. Nei. Og det må du love meg. Ja, jeg lover det. Og tro jeg i Jesu navn av deg. Åh, kom igjen, Lukas! Kjeks på! I do like that. Come on. Fucking speed up. Oh, let's see. Pastique. No guns were needed. But they could have been used. Come in there. Come in. Peace, Paul. The hospital. To do the shuffle. So in the hell with that, you turn around. Yeah, um, yellow subtitles on it, like poorly, uh, poorly, like yellow, light yellow subtitles on the white hood there. Great choice, whoever closed yeah. captioned this. Jävlig förbanna. Ja, men det har vi skjønt. Ja. Ja. Det har vært minst av to og tre ganger. Ja, men vi er nødt til å passe på at ikke du oppfører deg sånn at andre mennesker blir skremt og usikre. For du har faen ikke en jævel som blir tøtt av meg. Nei, men du er så sint at folk blir redd. Du står jo her, er du redd? Nei, jeg er ikke redd, men jeg er jo politi. Du er faen det heller ikke her! Nei, men her... Du synes ikke ut her! Jeg vil ikke... Unnskyld at jeg ler, altså. Kommer det noen som ikke har det bra? Nei, sitt her ned. Sitt her ned. Så må du være stille. Det er andre syke mennesker her, vet du. Det er det som... 
Det kan gå til det er sånt da. Når du blir så sint, så blir det problem for sånne. Fisle fine. Ja, ja. Fiste fitte fitte. Ja, ja. Ja, han var jo herlig, vet du. Nei, nei. Kjære venner. Ja, men jeg har lyst til å holde på beina dine, for jeg vil ikke at du skal sparke i legen. Hva i faen gjør du at tåla ikke er tupp i det her? Nei, nei, men det er ikke noe... Hvis du ikke kunne det. Yeah, no, Sven. I wasn't eyeing at that. I was eyeing at the cops laughing at that. That like it was sort of a inappropriate thing. Dang it! Stop hanging up. You don't need to take the books. Yeah, but it's good. Okay. So here. That's it. Ødelegger du, nå ødelegger du koppen som du hadde fått. Åh, dammit, åh, dammit. Ja, rolig nå, rolig nå, rolig nå. Ta madrassen her nå, skal du få teppet av meg, så skal jeg hente en ny kopp. Ja. All right, now all I have to say to any of that is this. Close fuel. I wish a Ramsey were around for that. Um, sounds like 90% of Germany's hooligans. Fair enough. I don't know if uh, I've told that here uh, already, but I've once witnessed um, an arrest under my windows, and uh, the fucking policeman like kicked the guy uh, as he was on the ground, uh, just just for making them run. Um, yeah, that's that was, yeah, that, that's pretty common with cops that they punish you if you make them work for it. It's nice to see the, the French police do it, too. You don't understand why we say all cops are bad, do you, Sven? Um, you, you clearly, like, imagine thinking all cops are bad with an American mindset added. There are bad ones, though, not all. Like, you don't understand where the, the origin of all cops are bastards. It's a systemic critique. It's a critique of police maintaining the status quo for a system that is coercive and oppressive. Yeah, we've got French people in here, with fucking Germans in here, literally saying, like, all cops are bastards, too. Like, it's, it's a critique of the system. Yeah. You swear an oath to uphold the laws of the land, knowing that those laws of the land are coercive and oppressive, that they're unjust, that they're unfair, and yet you swear that oath anyway. That's where they- I don't they know it, that's the thing. That's, that's where they critique, that's where the critique finds its origin. And as Viva's saying, and I was in Sweden and they're a cab too. <laughs> Viva fucking straight up doing it. <coughs> Like it's hard to to find a cop with class consciousness. Yeah, no, they don't. Why would a cop have class consciousness? They're an elevated class above the proletariat. They're they're essentially a vanguard. So of course they wouldn't. Um, hey, sourcing, what's up, man? Sourcing straight up coming in hot. It's their job to be pieces of shit. Um. They enforce the law of the land to control a whole lot of lamb. Yep. Uh, thin, thin blue line, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, again, you know, just showing your ignorance again. Um. Oh, okay, so, all right, so y'all want some cursed-ass shit? This was, dude, this was posted in Hole Up, um, r slash Hole Up. Um, this, this is, this is bad. This is some cursed ass shit. All right. 
So, so. here you go. <sighs> Once I found a dildo in my mom's sock drawer while I was looking for money. So I borrowed it, and it was a pretty good ride. Kind of thicker than what I'm used to. But anyway, when I was finished, I was cleaning it off, and there was something etched into the side near the base. Turns out it was uh, it was the name of one of those services that makes custom-printed dildos of real-life dicks. And I've been too scared to think about whose it was, but it was probably my dad's. I shoved my dad's dick up my ass. Okay. I told you it's cursed as fuck. Cursed as fuck. The next comment is, all right, I'm tapping out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So back on the topic of all cups and bastards, uh, in the l- last <laughs> April, uh, I was just uh, like, nope, nope. <laughs> Oh, fuck. <laughs> we're, we're still on the dick. All right. Oh. Uh. Uh. <laughs> Told you. Probably the most cursed thing you're going to encounter in a while. Uh, oh, yeah. For sure. Fertus is not amused. <laughs> I'm not, no, no, I, honestly, like, I'm, it's not that I'm not amused, I'm, I'm like, okay, it's a thing. It's, <laughs> like, it's, it's a piece of, you know, not plastic, but, what, rubber, latex, and whatever, um, like, it's an in- inanimate you, object, you, I'm like, you, oh, yeah. That is, that, that is very, uh, that is very enlightened in French of you. <laughs> but, eh, c'est la vie. Um. So, <laughs> thank you, Redactor. Uh, s- yeah, silicone, probably. Yeah, uh, yeah, especially one of the custom ones. Um. So, <laughs> uh, is that in chat? I want to text it to a friend. Says Turd. All right, I don't have it. Um, as text. Um, Turd. But I'm going to tag you with the image location of the screen grab. And if you want to transcribe it, there you go, turd. Go for it. Um, all right. So one of my friends had to deal with the police this week. I had to spend time explaining to him why he cannot talk to police and think that they're trying to do anything but fuck him over. Oof. Sourcing for sure. Pastique said administration and police forced people to live under the values they produce. Police is the uh, police are the ones enforcing the status quo. Therefore, they inherently suck. And because of that situation, they're more likely to act like pricks because they have the authority on one hand and they have people resenting them on the other. Yep. Shut the fuck. Yeah. Shut the fuck up Friday. Oh, God. Shut the fuck up Friday is just fucking great. Um, let's see. Let's see. Um, is this, which one is the, like, the most viewed? I think it's this one. Hang on, let me find it. (coughs) Mark and Craig, Pop Brothers at Law. We've been warning people, if you are working for an... Yep, this is it. (coughs) Mark and Craig, Pop Brothers at Law, we've been warning people, if you are working for an unlicensed dispensary, an illegal dispensary, and it gets raided, you need to shut the fuck up. If you shut the fuck up, you have a good, good chance that we can make the case go away. Case in point, three employees of an illegal shop were busted during a raid. Two of them said, oh, I'm just volunteering here. The third guy shut the fuck up. And the DA did not prosecute the guy who shut the fuck up. They can't prove what you were doing there. If you're a customer, patient, walked in to go to the bathroom, they don't know. You got to shut the fuck up, and it's shut the fuck up Friday. So review the script. What do you say when the cop first pulls you over? Why'd you pull me over? And when he keeps asking questions? I'm not discussing my day. And they ask more questions? Am I being detained or am I free to go? And if detained, what do you say? I invoke the fifth. And then what do you do? You shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up Friday. Never answer questions when the cops ask. Have safe holidays. Tip of the day. What do you do when talking to the cops, folks? Nothing. Shut the fuck up. Uh, yes. Pop Brothers at Law. Shut the fuck up Friday. Um, 
He's just a sweet man. He thinks if he does the right thing, everything will work out. Yeah, that's fucking stupid. That's, that's fucking stupid. That's naive and stupid beyond belief. Um, yeah. I, I hope you straighten him out, Sourcing. I hope you straighten him out and you get him fucking, get him schooled before he walks into that lion's den, for sure. <coughs> that, oh, Jesus. I couldn't imagine stepping into a fucking police station thinking that they're there to hurt that. Oh, they're just, you know, they're here to help people and I'm sure everything will be fine. Why am I being arrested? <laughs> I, I probably already said that, but once I lost my checkbook and I like I was pulled at the well, someone used it and well made fraud fraudulent checks in my name. So I was asked to go to the to the police station to, to give a statement, and the sheet on which the, the the policeman wrote my statement. By the way, the grammar is awful. Um, like the the sheet, me. namely said, um, "Please review your statement before signing." So I I read it back, and the uh, the policeman was. Like borderline outrage. Like, are you trying? Do you think I'm trying to pull a fast one on you? I'm like, it it says right there. I need to read it. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> um. All right. So, unelectable airwaves and raiders and viewers and all of those that came over with unelected. Um. Yes. Um. Hello. Not normal. Um. Just to answer questions right out of the gate. No, that's not normal. Um. <laughs> it's a special stream. Um, either way, welcome, uh, unelected, I, uh, unelectable, sorry. I hope you, uh, you guys had a good stream. Uh, what did y'all get up to? Uh, we we're just doing a little hating on cops. Um, but yeah, we've got a, we've got a multinational, uh, grouping, a, a multinational quorum of people here right now. And we were all just hating on cops. Um, well, most of us, all but one were hating on cops. Um, so welcome all. Uh, Tony, furry stream. No, not furry stream, um, but the the cat ears. Okay, so for those of you who don't know, hi, my name is Kai. Um, I stream. Um, I'm, I educate people in anarchism. I do uh, community organizing and outreach uh, in that regard, right? Um, there has been a joke. There has been attempts to try and get me into cat ears for quite some time. Um, last week, somebody literally paid for the cat ears and, uh, they were chosen on stream by the people that were there, uh, the community, um, uh, uh, by the community members. These are the cat ears. Um, this is going to be the first and last full stream with cat ears on. I'm, uh, I'm, I've said that I'll do them as like a, a minute or two channel point redemption um, after this stream just for shits and giggles, um, but they are not a normal thing. They will not become a regular thing, um, but you make promises, you do what you do. Um, yeah, Kai is a cat of the people. Um, he's a kitey cat. Um, checked out the debate with Matt Binder, Binder, and the Gossip Sofa people. All right, good to know. Sir Yogi Wan, thank you for, oh, Bezos Bucks, too. You're making Daddy Bezos pay me out of his own pocket. Look at that. Um, Sir Yogi Wan, thank you for that sub. Um, and Tony and um, Leviticlius, um, thank you for those follows as well. Um, FTP now and forever. We picked a good night to raid you then. Yes, yes, you you basically did. Yeah, it's, you, you got one of the one-offs. Um, no, no, Bagheera. No, I did not. Um, oh, what a, it's, it's, you know, um, they're, I mean, they're decent looking like Rev. I'm pretty sure it was Rev that found these. Um, it was you Rev, right? I'm not, I'm not mistaking that. Um, you know, these are, they're cute. They're good. As far as cat ears go, I've seen far, far worse. Um, so yeah, Rev, I think it was you. Um, it's not just a transfer protocol. Yes. Uh, trust me, sourcing. That's my first instinct when seeing FTP is like, you know, the IT fucking consultant geek fucking spray. It's like, what does file transfer protocol have to do with this? Oh, we're doing this. Uh, yes, they are Etsy. Uh, Re uh, Rev, they were Etsy. 
Um, okay, so for those of you who came in with the raid, this is a thing. I d this is me. I do. I'm gonna get up and do something. Um, I do wear this normally. The, the skirt is normal. I live in the desert. For those of you who don't know, um, I reside at present in Las Vegas. Um, the first time I put a skirt on, I was angry. I was angry. I was like, who stole this from me? Because as near as I can tell, dudes, if you're, if you're like male, whatever that may mean to you, if you got dangly bits between your legs... Skirts are superior technology. <laughs> They're superior technology. And I was pissed the first time I put a skirt on. I was like, who took this from me? Hey. Side cam. Um, did, did you mean you were pissed? Royally, pi <laughs> royally pissed. <laughs> I, yeah, I was. I was. I was honestly, yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I, if Kai is a coward for holding it, if I didn't hold it, um, then I would be TOS'd off of Twitch very quickly, um, because, um, commando. So, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, there's no point of wearing the skirt if you're going to wear underwear under the skirt. It's my take on it. Um, I did, Sven. I scratched the cat ear. Um, I don't like to, I don't like to bowl. This is a good take. No, skirts are superior technology. Um, plain and simple. I, I was angry. First time I put it on, I was like, who, who, who took this from me? This should have been a thing my entire life. My entire life, I should have been wearing skirts. And somebody stole this from me. <laughs> yeah, I was angry. Um, oh, yeah. Um, the, I heard the quartering pissed in his basement on stream. Yeah, it sounds about right. Um, yeah, that sounds about right for Jeremy. I was hoping that the skirt will be hiked up during the side cam redemptions. Uh, <laughs> Angie. Yeah, there's, there's a few times I've done adjustments, Angie, that I'm like, oh, I swear to God, if they fucking did it now, I'd be screwed. <laughs> um, yeah, so welcome um the skirt is a normal thing the um the fingernail polish has become a normal thing um it, it you know yeah um this is chud bait um for anybody who's wondering this is for the community the ears are for the community but the fingernail polish was discovered after a spa a uh, spa day one weekend and i came back with painted fingernails because why not i had a mani pedi as part of the spa day and i was feeling whimsical let's do a let's put some color on my fingernails right like it's just paint like it's color it doesn't it literally doesn't matter to me but we had so many fucking chuds lose their minds that monday that i'm like well now i'm painting my fingernails regularly like this is a thing now like, I cannot resist this. This is too easy. They lose their fucking minds. Um, yeah, been commando for 20 years. Commando my whole fuck, uh, whole life fuck underwear. Um, uh, what's my thought? What's my idea on, I don't know what that's supposed to be. W-J-G, W-G-M-H-Y women. Uh, oh, on why women wear uh, dresses, skirts throughout most of the recent human history. Um, I, 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 yeah, why? Um, I don't have any theories as, like, I've, um, one professor of anthropology and a couple of other people told me that um, we have a few different people to blame. The British are part of this. Um, but there's a few different groups, disparate groups that are responsible for this uh, cultural change. Because as I've pointed out, um, oh, Rev, I wish I were, I, w I wish I were that Rev. Um, unfortunately my mother was one of the, despite being a nurse was connived and convinced and browbeaten by society and culture at large. Literally her, her response. I, I, sh I, sh 
literally have shamed my mother multiple times. Like, why the fuck did you circumcise me? You're a nurse. You know better. Like, what's the fucking reason? I don't know. It's just the thing you do. It's the thing you do. You chopped off a piece of your, your newborn. You had somebody chop off a, the end of your newborn's penis because it's the thing you do. Good. That's brilliant reasoning, mother. Brilliant. I've given her shit for that for years. Um, so, yeah. Um, yeah, it's fucking... I, I don't get it. Uh, streamer. Okay, one, you can call me Kai. <laughs> My name is Kai, K-A-I. Um, streamer, what's your opinion uh, Opinion on one-party states? Uh, cringe. Cringe. I, I'm an anarchist. I don't approve of the state to start with. So one-party states are even worse. Um, uh, Have you ever heard the story about um, Patrick Stewart's circum circumcision? No. Well, long story short, he thought he had one. He didn't. Yeah, he, his wife had to, to tell him, no, you're not circumcised, dude. That's hilarious. That tells you how few dicks he, he managed to see. Right? Because I remember, I remember the first time I saw a circumcised, uncircumcised penis. Like, it was I, I, six. I remember his name, for fuck's sake. Like, I, I was six. He was six as well. Fucking, like, we were, you know, we were playing. We were exploring. His name was Silas. And I remember to this day, why doesn't mine look like that? Right? Like, I knew there was something different going on. That tells you how few penises Patrick Stewart has managed to see in his life. That he managed to make it to adulthood with a wife and not realize that what he was rocking was the other one. That's hilarious. Um, I know, Viva, how else would they make all the facial creams? If people don't, if you, if you do not, if you're not aware, a good portion of the circumcised foreskins of small baby boys end up in cosmetic products. It's a thing. Fucking weird. Um, well, I please they don't go to waste. <laughs> I, ew. Um, what do anarchists want? A lot of things. Um, but I don't speak for all of them, uh, human wrongs. Um, I can tell you that anarchism is about a philosophical challenge. Uh, it's about a collapsing down of hierarchical power structures into what's called a heterarchy or a horizontal organizational structure and a philosophical challenging of unjust power and authority mechanisms and the dismantling and replacement of them wherever they may lie. So under, uh, utilizing that lens of analysis and under those overall, uh, overarching umbrella, um, set of sort of metrics or rubric, Anarchists could want a whole host of things, but uh, anarchists are fans, or at least I especially am fans of there's no project of projects. Once you understand the, uh, once you've been given and you truly integrate the tools um, that is anarchism um, and you start utilizing it as a lens of analysis, your individual autonomy then kicks in, your priorities um, take precedence. So what your affinity group may advocate for or uh, attempt to change in the world may be different than how I prioritize and what a different affinity groups do. Generally speaking, though, not fans of the state, not fans of coercive, uh, uh, coercive systems, not fans of oppression and, you know, the removal and replacement thereof where they may lie. Um, <coughs> um, I'm glad I only use vegan makeup. Uh, I thought that's where the Pope gets his calamari from. Um, do you mean your circumcision led you to be getting inquisitive about other penises? Uh, Pestique, no, I was, I was, I was, ex um, I, I knew I was, I knew I was gay from day one. Like I was, I was always that way, right? Like I was chasing boys around the, the playground, not girls. Like there was never a moment in my life that I'm like, what am I? I, I instinctually, you know, yeah. So that's what that was about. Um, do I consider Noam Chomsky an anarchist? Um, I would have to ask Noam whether he considers himself an anarchist these days. I would defer to the individual. Um, I think purity tests are, to borrow a term from the Gen Zers, cringe. I think if you... It, it, there are certain things that I think disqualify you, for sure. Um, but as for whether you qualify... That I, I don't, 
I'm not a fan of. Um, I think. I think it qualifies for the you know the the um, Keystone um, belief that it criticizes hierarchies. Yeah. So I, I do think he, he qualifies at least in some regards as being an anarchist. Yeah, I, I you know I, again I, I I would ask him. I'd be like, no, are you an anarchist? If he says yes, then I would defer to him. He's he's an intellectual of his own right. He understands these concepts. If he believes himself to be an anarchist, then I would defer to his own judgment about him. Who am I to judge him otherwise? Is he the best anarchist? How do you metric best? Right? Like how do you how would you, you know, I know certain people because Noam advocates for incrementalism. Noam advocates for a Saul Alinsky style of um, manipulating systems of governance in order to take down corporatocracy and then dismantle the government thereafter. Um, so the order of operations is reversed from some what some people believe. I understand the critiques and criticisms that people have of him, uh, especially from the anarchist milieu um, facing uh, facing outwardly at him. Um, but you know, no, I, yeah. If he said he considers himself an anarchist, then yeah, I would, uh, again, defer to him on that one because as near as I can tell, there's nothing that disqualifies him. Now, if I were to channel my inner Emma Goldman, she would fucking, she'd bash him over the head. Like Emma Goldman, I, I've said this numerous, numerous times. Emma Goldman would hate me. And we would fight like cats and dogs. And the same would go with Noam Chomsky. Emma Goldman would hate him. She would fight him to the ends of the earth. But do not get any of this mistaken. Noam and I both, I, I, I'm comfortable saying, like Noam and I both respect would respect the fuck out of that woman. She's one of the baddest ass people to ever walk the planet. I love her to death. I know she and I would fight like cats and dogs, but I have nothing but the utmost respect for her. But yes, if I were to channel my inner Emma Goldman, no, Noam's not an anarchist, right? Like she would, she would discount him and I both. Um, so she was, she was a bit of an absolutist. Let's just put it that way. <coughs> um, yeah. Time to get Gnome on the discord to ask. Wonder if he's a Breen fan. <laughs> um, let's see. Turd Kai playboys and nudity in the home were not uncommon as a kid. I was suspected it was my dad promoting heterosexuality and me as a maturing boy. Can it be effective? Uh, no. No, I don't think so whatsoever. I read Playboys. I had a Playboy subscription. I literally read Playboys. I didn't, yeah, like whatever, nudity. Some of the best writing, period, in the last century has been in Playboys. Um, for the, what was that? Palaniuk for, for instance. Yeah, oh yeah, no. I mean, fucking, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Hunter S. Thompson, Ian, uh, Ian Fleming, right? Like, I mean, there there is some amazing authors and journalists and writing that have been in playboys in the last century. It is truly one of some of the best reading straight up. Sure. There's like naked chicks. I have to flip through whatever. Ew. But you know, if it gets me an amazing Hunter S Thompson article, yeah, whatever. <laughs> um, so no, I don't think it has an effect. What's <laughs> you're, you're either gay or you're not. <laughs> um, Yeah, the whole mag was, yeah, no, it was high quality there for a while. Um, good night, Cassidy. Take care of yourself. Um, say, say, get, uh, say hi to Bobby for me, Cassidy, if you're still here. Um, all right, so somebody asked something. Um, Erica's fight like dollars on how to define it. Um, only amongst ourselves, uh, Kalamata. Uh, only amongst ourselves. Like, anarchists are really good about bonding together when we have to deal with an external thing. But we like to debate. Like, anarchists are one of those groups that um, anarchism is still alive. Anarchist theory is still evolving. Like, Marxism, Leninism, like, the MLs, dude, they have no new theory. They have no new theory. Their shit is just written in stone and it's old as fuck now. Anarchist theory is still being developed. It's still evolving. I can point to m multiple anarchist th uh, uh, form, uh, forms of anarchist theory that are younger than I am, right? That have, have gained ground and multiple people have worked on and they, you know, um, post-anarchism, uh, Saul Newman, Jason McQuinn, um, post-leftism, Bob Black, also Jason McQuinn as well. Um, oh God, I'm forgetting one name that works on post-leftism as well. Um, yeah, uh, there's, 
it's still alive. It's still being developed because that's how it works. Um, so yeah, I mean, yeah, anarchists like to fight amongst themselves and it generally speaking, um, wait, so you're saying an ideology named after a dead person is static. Um, Sven, you really don't know what you're talking about, do you? Sven, do you want to come on the air with me and have a conversation about anarchism? Because apparently you need you need schooling in anarchist theory. Because the fact that you just brought up Somalia is something. <clears throat> what does a horizontal power structure look like and how it can compete with a state with a stratified hierarchy ruled by a board of directors in the form of a party aristocracy? Um, well... What does it look like? It looks like a piano, uh, a piano key. This is the infamous piano map. Um, I've driven, uh, drawn it a couple of times. Um, so horizontal, nodes down, right? Um, generally uses consensus decision-making, can be federated easily. Uh, two interesting groups have studied hierarchical organizational structures. Um, one, the Department of Defense, because field operations without running, an, uh, running a, a question up a chain of command is necessary in a whole host of tactics. And two, interestingly enough, disparate groups, Department of Defense, right? The British, uh, the British Architectural Association has also studied this. And so the uh, Department of Defense founded a highly effective uh, field operation modality. The, uh, the British Architectural Association found numerous uh, benefits um, within the uh, world of uh, commerce. They found it was more resilient to downturns in the economy. They found it was more resilient as far as uh, employee, uh, employee uh, time span uh, spent as an employee. Uh, it de decreases employee turnover. It increases ha happiness rates within the uh, employment set. It increases productivity rates. The uh, pro uh, products that were being produced, uh, the clientele saw an uptick, they saw an uptick in the clientele's um, rate of happiness or um, success with the projects overall. So the internal structure is happier. The external structure is happier. It survives downturns in the economy better. It weathers uh, internal drama better. And it is actually more effective. They saw less bureaucratic or administrative input and less micromanaging as a result. All right now, how does this transfer to... Um, let's see. Um... That's your kind of when you need schooling. Um, okay, so how can it compete with? That's what the, the, question, the rest of the question was. How can it compete with a state with stratified hierarchy ruled by a board of directors in the form of party aristocracy? Uh, well, I would, if you want a microcosmic example, I would go to, um, because that's usually the best way to do this, right, is microcosmic, macrocosmic, right? If you want a microcosmic example, I'd go to the anarchistic Republic of Kospaya. It lasted for about 375 years. Um, admittedly, the um, basically 99.5% of the time, anarchistic communities don't collapse and relieve due to their own um, structure. They fall to external authoritarian forces. Now, if this is your critique, then I would argue that everybody falls to those. Um, when the United States military comes a knock and shit happens, when the Russian, when the Red Army comes a knock and shit happens, right? When the British Empire comes a knock and shit happens, it really doesn't matter what form of governance or economic system you have at that point. Overwhelming globalist uh, authoritarian force is going to collapse you one way or the other. But the anarchist Republic of Kospaya lasted for 375 years. Economically, they were organized uh, primarily around communitarian principles um, as far as their uh, societal organizational structure structure anarchistic principles they were so effective that they outcompeted the papal states um when the papal states uh made things illegal like tobacco the uh Cospaya said yeah we don't care about that that's not something that we've decided to do anything about and it's perfectly legal to do that here when they started persecuting jews where did the jews uh, where did the jews flee to in the in neighboring areas Cospaya because they were welcome there because again why would they give a shit about that sort of thing highly redundant highly effective due to the uh, dis, uh, due to cybernetic theory if you want to look into some of these things cybernetic theory and network topological structure basically dictates that anarchistic societies are highly resilient due to the fact that they have no centralized structure to collapse on itself so blah 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 how do they compete pretty effectively um 
you have to account for things like um, neoliberal hypercapitalism and its viral effects and its influence thereof. You have to account for authoritarian effects, such as like in the case of Makhno in Ukraine, um, the the Black Army successfully fought off a whole fuck ton of people, um, but eventually it fell under the weight of the Red Army, I believe. Um, white, yeah, they fought off the white, then they uh, fought the red, and then they fought the red again, and then the second time with the red army due to a series of broken deals with Lenin. Lenin cut a bunch of deals with Makhno and went back on a series of promises and agreements, and then there was uh, problems with that. Um, you could look to Spain during the Spanish Civil War. Um, 50% of agriculture and industry produced during the Spanish Civil War was produced by anarchistically organized communes. So it has highly productive values, these sorts of things, blah, 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 blah. Um, yeah, but yours would, anything would fall under that. That's, again, human wrongs. Your critique is not that of anarchism. Your critique is that authoritarianism in the face of a uh, a global authoritarian force because remember in the case of ukraine what they were facing was not just russia they were facing germany russia a uk and america right like there was a set of globalist influences that were stockpiling working and foment fomenting uh, action within the region that and um in like in the case of spain they had to fucking the republicans they had the russians they had there's a whole host of things so your critique isn't that of anarchism nor heterarchical organizational structures your point is more that when i bring 5 million people to shoot at you it doesn't really matter what you do Right. Like that's that's really what you're saying, which is, I mean. OK. And by the way, I recently shared um, a podcast episode from Behind the Bastards about uh, elite panic, uh, ver which basically opposes uh, in time of crisis what hierarch um, no, hierarchical structures do versus um, mutual aid and um, you know, community organization. And basically, what the elite will do when disaster strikes is just panic themselves and assume that the population is going to ransack the place, uh, panic, do all sort of you know, crazy stuff. But on the ground, what actually happens, what we saw, during fires, earthquake, hurricanes, is consistently the fact that uh, community organize themselves and deal with the trouble on the ground with that, uh, the need of external help or, you know, leadership. Um, yeah, but your critique doesn't meet philosophical or meta-ethical critiques uh, very successfully, human wrongs. Your authoritarian system failed to, uh, fail to clear a number of hurdles. I mean, here's the truth of the matter. Is, uh, it, have you ever run the veil of ignorance um, thought experiment on yourself, human wrongs? Um, because it seems like you've, you, you need to. Um, yeah, and again, just because it's effective doesn't make it an ideal situation. It doesn't make it an ideal solution just because it, in a number of instances throughout human history, has proven that might makes right, right? Like, that's not the way we develop things as human beings, generally speaking. So, yeah. Except it hasn't. That's the, tr the truth of the matter is there's numerous examples throughout human history, including the internet, that can show that uh, communistic principles operating out of mutual aid and free association and affinity groups can develop extraordinary technologies that reshape the face of the planet. So you don't see the purpose of it, so you've never done it. Uh, what, you, you understand, Kai, to um, get rid of the COVID-19 pandemic, we need to go with the substance that kills the most, most microbes, bacteria, virus, right, etc. So any, everyone needs to shoot bleach because that's what kills the most 
um, uh, virus. It's logical. It's what works the best. It's what's best for everyone. Yeah, knowing what it is, but having actually done it doesn't is the difference. And besides that point, what kind of world do you want to live in? Are you an active participant in this world, or do you think you're along for the ride? Because if you think you're just along for the ride and you're you're subject to just a strong man's whim, every whim, then that's fine. So, I, I mean, if you just wish to be a passive participant in this world and not an active participant, that's your choice to make. But I hate to be, be the bearer of bad news, and if anybody knows what Kai means when he says he hates to be the bearer of bad news, I hate to be the bearer of bad news. Most people don't wish for that. What kind of worlds can exist? Many. Many. See, you would have argued that feudalism was the only option. See, this is this is how I'm interpreting this, is that you can't you ha you lack vision, which is sad. I mean it, it is sad. You lack vision. You you lack the ability to project forward into an undetermined future, and you see only what has been or what is, and nothing beyond. In a feudalistic state, you would have argued for the maintenance of the status quo of the feudalistic state, not being able to see past the p potential economic and pop population collapse of Europe during the Black Plague, leading into constitutional market monarchism, right? There are many things that lie beyond the current economic and governmental systems that have not been fully realized on a global scale yet, but that doesn't mean it won't happen. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't try either. And to give up that way is depressing. Uh, redacted, no, I don't believe them to be an ANCAP. I think they're more of an authoritarian or um, almost a nihilistic, uh, a nihilistic authoritarian of some sort. It's really interesting. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's depressing, but it is fascinating. Um, anyway, um, I think that's enough attention paid to one person. Um, no redact, I just saw feudalism. No, no. Man, that's just a giant hole you just, like, f dug and then fell into. There's a difference between rejecting any sort of novelty and thinking that humans are constrained by a natural order. Um, we're also not meant to fly, either. We weren't, we weren't designed, or c evolution did not predetermine us to exist in the vacuum of space, and yet there's motherfuckers flying around in the vacuum of space right now. Right? Your natural order is laughable at best and at worst you're condemning yourself to an eternity in hell by thinking that way it's very interesting to me that you know nature has replaced god in uh, like modern parlance like uh, you you ought not do x or y why not because it's not natural well who gets to decide what's natural and what's not like i'm sorry i'm sorry did you just say that slavery lost relevance due to the emergence of capitalism in the bourgeoisie it, you do realize that the slave trade is larger now than during the era of the dutch slave trade right like it is it's more relevant now than it was in times past it, it capitalism literally has one one leg standing in slavery still Chocolate, electronics, fabrics. Yeah, because Nestle doesn't use slave trade whatsoever. No, because mo most of the Chinese electronics aren't utilizing what fundamentally is slavery. No. Oh, well, of course we have slavery, but not to the same degree. Oh, so it's still relevant, just not as relevant as you see it is. And never mind the fact that there's more slaves now than there were in times past even. Which makes it less relevant how? Hmm. <laughs> 
<laughs> Kvass. You used that word again. Um, yeah, Mick and C uh, hey, uh, hey, Mick and I think you were in here earlier, but yeah. <laughs> I wonder when, when we're going to hear about the bell curve or... I don't know, natural reproductive rights. Like, uh, I'm w waiting for those. You're, you're, yeah, you, you're waiting. You're like, you, there's a little, few dog whistles there that you've been picking up on too, huh? Just, 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 just sitting out there on the edge, basically. Um, yeah, no, I, 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 I have sympathy for people who lack vision that much that they can't see a potential organizational modality that is more advantageous to the individual and the, and the group simultaneously is as near as I can tell. Yeah. These are the these types of people would sit in feudalistic era. They'd sit under a Pharaoh and be like, well, this is the best we can do. Well, it's both a failure of imagination, but also uh, empathy. So not only you fail to envision a, a world where people would suffer less, but also you you can't imagine how that would come to be. So yeah, it's it's very sad that you're so broken. Um. Yeah. I. I yeah. I. I did, Viva. Oh, we got the IQ part. Yeah. I, I just. Wow. Anyway, music. There we go. Um. Oh, yeah, this was fun. Um, Newburgh, Oregon School District banned pride flags. Um, so the, there's a farm owner who's in, um, view of the high school. He painted a giant pride flag across the side of his barn. <laughs> He's like, sure on campus pride flags may be banned, but basically you're in like the entire campus can see the side of this giant ass barn right next door. He's like, you can't do shit about my property. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, yeah, straight up just paint paint an entire side of his barn into a pride flag uh props to him uh and everybody see the uh giant uh crowd at fucking the my pillow guys fucking cyber symposium oh it's so fucking huge it's amazing here here's the um here's the giant crowd y'all <laughs> yeah, where's the bolt bit yeah we can we can we can zoom in here uh, this is Yeah. <laughs> Look at the tens of people. Somebody counted it up actually. They they arrived at like including staff and um fucking like ancillaries. They got to like I don't know, like 60 something or something like that. Um but yeah, that's that's the the Mike Lindell symposium. It's going to be fuck it's amazing. Um no, 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 no. You stopped the count. You stopped the count. No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, we can, we can, here, let's, let's fucking, you know what? Let's, let's, let's do it. Um, this is a decent resolution photo. We can, we can work off of this. Um, all right. Top level. Two, four. Uh, wait, there's my cursor. All right. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16 up top. All right, 18, 19, I'm doing an outer ring here. 20 in the uh, in the back, I can see that guy through the glass. 21, 24, 25, uh, tw uh, yeah, 24, 26, 28, 30, um, uh, 33, 35, uh, 39, 40, 42, 44, 46, 48. 
50, 52, 56, 50, uh, 57, 59, 60, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67. 67 fucking people in in that photo. Uh, if you want to recount, you, you, I'm sure there's bam bamboo fi fibers on that uh, on that photo. Oh yeah, somebody somebody actually did say that on fucking Reddit. They were like, you know what? We need the ticket. We need the ticket attendance count uh, from the door. And somebody immediately replied, "I found bamboo fibers on those tickets." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes, hail Satan. Um, I asked good Abraham or whatever he said. Uh, he says you don't fuck. I have that from authority. Uh, watching Lindell knelt down on stage when he found out hours later that the judge dismissed Block. It was pure magic. Oh, uh, Levicleus. Uh, um, yes, that was my favorite part. I didn't watch the fucking symposium, but that was my favorite part of the symposium. Yeah, when Mike Lindell fa uh, heard he got word that the one point three billion dollar defamation suits was being allowed to proceed and he ran off stage <laughs> it's like oh shit shit just got real man shit just got real yeah oh uh. uh me toad i'm sure i don't have it uh ready um but let me let me see if i can't Republican counties. Yep, here we go. I got you. God, the internet's an amazing thing. Also, not created by authoritarians, nor is it hierarchical. Um. Anyway, um. Uh, They're trying to make it so. Yes, they are. Um. All right, here we go. This is. This is moments after a federal judge uh, ruled that Dominion's lawsuits against Mike Lindell, Sidney Powell, Giuliani, and others can proceed. Republican counties are being won by Trump, but by a much smaller number than projected. And then you have Philadelphia much closer and able to do its thing because Rudy Giuliani will tell you Philadelphia is the hey, kingpin of election fraud. But it wasn't possible without stuff like this. Republican counties are being... Yeah, just, oh shit. He had other business to attend to suddenly. Like, you could tell that symposium wasn't even happening. He just tuned that dude right out and was like, foom. I got you, me toad. Um, uh, let's see, what else did we have? Oh, yeah, like, police unions across this country are refusing or backing up cops who are refusing the uh, COVID vaccine. As near as we can get, I saw an estimate uh, from one of the police unions, 50% of officers nationwide may want to refuse the vaccine. Um, two birds, one stone, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> like, this is, this is, this is a problem solving a problem. Like, all right. Right. Well, the problem is, is they're going to infect people they brutalize, so, uh. Um, oh, well, see, that's the thing, is there are, there are mayors that are setting, like, putting their foot down. If you don't get the vaccine, you don't work. Like, you're not everybody. And it, this has been tried before. Um, the Supreme Court has ruled on this. They are allowed to make this. They are allowed to actually make this ruling like the, you, you can mandate that they have to be vaccinated and so if they don't get the vaccine they don't work whoops i'm okay with it um and let's see Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and Western Australia, credit where credit's due. Um, but apparently Western Australia yesterday or two days ago, one day ago, Western Australia uh, joined apparently every other Australian straight, uh, straight, every Australian state um, and territory in legislating what's known as safe zones for abortion clinics. Basically, it is now illegal in all of Australia to protest outside of an abortion clinic. 
which would be a really nice thing here in America if we weren't actively trying to get rid of reproductive health clinics, female doctors, OBGYNs. Because I remember when that OBGYN got bombed back in the 90s. Like, they pipe-bombed his ass. He wasn't even, like, an abortion clinic. He was just an OBGYN that would perform abortions if necessary. They fucking pipe-bombed that dude and killed him. Um, and by they, I mean a bunch of fucking Christian radicals, right? They, they were straight up like in the name of God type. Yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. Redacted. Not everyone who goes to Planned Parenthood is there for an abortion for fuck's sake. Not even like, not even, not everyone. It's the vast overwhelming majority of people that go to Planned Parenthood aren't there for abortions. It, it, it's a sig insignificant portion of their clientele actually is there for an abortion. I have a question for chat. Everyone who's not from the US, who, what would you feel if you heard a politician and their speech with and god protect our country oh god yeah and god bless america it's a fucking nightmare oh sven sven is attempting to do like a, a something that a like an edgy teenage atheist would do um in the form of a gotcha not represent and not recognizing that um that anarchists can also fundamentally operate within a system and uh, can recognize that um, it, removing an element of coercion or oppression within your society can be seen as a, uh, as a net positive, even despite the fact that the state may have been, had a hand in it, and that the long-term goal of an anarchist can actually differ from that momentary uh, benefit. Yeah. Um, to sum it up, failure to recognize nuance. Um. Oh, and you see that fucking Red Bull stunt drift shit in Kiev? They Red Bull did some like drifting stunt shit in um in a historic a historic 11th century square in Kiev and they fucking ruined it. Like they ruined it. <laughs> They did it without permits. They did it without, like, straight up. They just fucked this place up. Um, yeah, no, no commercial permits, no filming permits. Um, they failed to put up security fencing. They damaged the entire fucking square, basically. They ruined the surface of the square. Um, yeah. Just the pavement was from the 11th century, you were saying? Yeah, 11th century. Yeah. Fucking hell. I'm watching it, uh, pictures, and yeah, they did a number on it. Yeah. Like, that's not the sort of thing you can just go out and power wash. Like, you, you fucked up the surface of something that has been in play for a very long time. All for all for a, a a um for a rapper and a drifting uh, stunt. Basically, a couple of cars drifting with a rapper fucking over it. Yeah. Kevin witnessed their own fast and furious moment in the city center on August 10th when Red Bull Ukraine illegally filmed a sport car doing donuts on the historic Sofia Square. I'm so sure that butch butcher this. The stunt burned black tire tracks into the set path square, which will cost 15,000 HR. What's the, uh, well, it's whatever the fucking what, Ukrainian it's, one is. It's $2,000 to, to remove. Well, that's not too bad, but it's still like the ethos behind it is. Yeah. Here. Oh, it's a Facebook player. No wonder it fucking sucks. Um. So, like, why does that player immediately go to, like, low quality? Oh, it's Facebook. Never mind. <laughs> fucking Facebook uh, video player. 
Um, I never got any freedom wings, just the red ones. <laughs> rev, fucking rev. Um, Sven, to answer your question honestly, because you constantly do that. You think I haven't seen you in the arena? You think I haven't seen you interact with people? And the fact that you constantly do that? That's probably why I think you constantly do that. <laughs> um. And the fact that you fail to recognize that there's a distinction to be made, that there is a series of progressions, and that nothing happens magically overnight, that I as an anarchist can embrace incrementalism and, uh, and still f uh, forge a path forward to systemic change, while also acknowledging that things like, hey, let's not torture a woman while she uh, has to make a difficult decision outside of an abortion clinic can be seen as a net positive and separate that from the authoritarian measures that it took to implement that. I can also see using a Gorsian uh, method of analysis for uh, Gors was a French socialist, FYI, that one can actually utilize the power of the state in order to dismantle the state and create dual power structures to further the distance from that authoritarian power structure while implementing it and utilizing it to destroy itself. But hey. Um, Reddit's, uh, FYI, Reddit is now claiming to be value it, uh, valued at more than $10 billion. They just, they just raised an additional $410 million in funding. Yeah, that's in addition to the $250 million in funding they just raised earlier this year. So Reddit's sitting on about $670, uh, $660 million of venture capital that they raised this year alone. The only good subreddits are the trans ones. All redacted. There's a bunch that are still under the radar that are really interesting um there's a, there's in fact people who spin up new subreddits just to like th they sequence them right hey goldfish thank you for the prime subby hey what's up uh what's up doc um yeah um again read rules for radicals sven and maybe you'd grasp this seriously you need to you need to read alinsky you need to read rules for radicals. Um, oh shit! Did he? Yeah. No. I mean, he's he's. I love Viva. That was one of my favorite moments with with you, straight up, when you fucking put that into Discord. That you, when you had finally like listened to a red Alinsky and you're like, I get it now. Like this is what Kai's going on about all the time. Like I get, I get it. Yeah, that was that was a, that was a nice moment for me. That you're like that, to see that happen in somebody live. Just like, oh shit. Yeah. Um. Yes. Yes. Let's all. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm gonna pause the music. Um, a moment, a moment of silence for uh, for Curio. Um. Yes. Gone, but not forgotten.
you need to read rules for radicals, Finn. You do. Um, <laughs> Rev, Rev, you missed Curio before Curio was even gone. I saw that shit in chat that night that you're like, I miss him already and he's not even off the air. <laughs> uh Um, Gemma, he has taken an extended break and may not be back to streaming. He's still doing podcasts. He's still doing YouTube work. He's still around. He exists. You can still join up to his Discord server. But, yeah. His, his streaming career may be over. Yeah. We don't joke about that, Sven. There's very few things in this world that I I, I think are... In, like, we don't joke about burning books. Yeah. The meat is now the stream. Yes. Um, I have. I have. Hang on. I have it. Where is it? Y'all ready? Are y'all fucking ready? Now I'm going to pause it there because this song actually is really long. <laughs> it's really fucking long. It actually is. He made, he made like a full length song out of people saying his name. Um, a hundred, like it is, it is a full length song of his name. Um, yeah, but I'm in there somewhere. I, I sent him, here's what, here's what I sent him. Cause he had me, he just wanted like clips and he needed clean audio. He didn't get clean audio of Curio and he couldn't get clean audio of me. So he just asked for a fucking thing. So I just sent him me tray, meet, meet, me tray, me tray, me tray, me tray, me tray, me tray. Me tray. This goes on for a while. I told him I'd just give him a series of inflections. Um, and he could do with it what he wanted. So, yes. Um, that's going to be Me Trey's new intro song. And maybe outro song. I don't know how he's going to use it. But Meat is going to use that as his, his intro to his stream. Um, so, yeah. Kvass. Roll over and listen. Um... Oh, um, and this was a fun headline. Uh, it's, it's not really a headline, but it did make news. Um, so y'all remember that it, apparently this idiot on the right um, is the one who said shit about like, you know, the gay dudes in my audience don't have AIDS. Hold your fucking like light up if you're one of the fucking ones, like not one of the queers with AIDS or whatever. Well, Lil Nas X is now Spotify's most streamed male rapper. He, and I love Out Magazine's headline, Lil Nas X just topped DaBaby as Spotify's most streamed male rapper. It's a nice touch by Out Magazine. It's a nice fucking touch on that one. Uh, Mitre used to be the most epic troll rev. The Mitre that you guys know is not the Mitre that the OGs know. We, the ones who came up with Mitre, who fucking went before we came over to Twitch, Mitre is a troll. He used to be, at least. He's not anymore. But he was an epic grade troll. For sure. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, it was, a, it was a solid fucking headline. Good on out, magazine. Oh, yeah, Viva. He's good at that. Um... I meant to, I didn't know it. Oh, um, and oh, just another reason Mississippi's one of the shit, like the shittiest state. A thousand kids in Mississippi have tested positive for COVID-19 right after school reopened. Yeah. A thousand kids pos tested positive. Oh yeah. Yeah, Jim, I'm not, I'm not spilling any fucking deep, dark secrets. Me sure open about that shit. Um... Oh, <laughs> uh, you know what? The funniest thing to ever happen on Curio's stream, as far as I'm concerned, was the thing with Asian Left. I don't know who was there. Um, if you were there, Rev, for the Asian Left thing where he came back, and it, it, it yeah, like, uh, it's like, oh, well, I'm not going to tell you. Never mind. We're like, What? I, honestly, that broke us. Cat was there for that. I was there. Mitre was there for that. Curio was there, of course, for that. Um, God, that fucking... Yeah, with Asian and Asian left. Um, yes, Amaris, the tattoo. The tattoo. I Honestly, we fucking broke. That broke me. That broke me. I was fucking laughing my ass ass off at that shit it was so apropos of nothing it was so fucking, he just it blows my mind to this day how fucking strange and just out of left field and how well it worked it just broke us all i was there when taz accidentally burned the stream for two days yes i was there for that one as well fucking taz dropping n-bombs on stream and nobody realizes that taz is of course a black woman um and so Two-day ban. Um, I didn't know about Kiryu until you rated me there. Dude, that's... It's, I, I... Once he had an audience of his own and he was above the... the Into the double digits, you know, I stopped rating him. But, yeah, it's... He's my boy from way back. Right? I, of course I wanted him some audience. I just didn't want him to get too much audience. Because then my dive bar would go away. <laughs> Greedy like that. What can I say? Um, let's see. Is there... Oh, I can't show that on stream. But God, that was fucking hilarious. Um, if you're in... Um, If you're in, if you're on the server, uh, I'm gonna fucking, I'm gonna put a, 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 put it up in memes with the comment that should be attached to it. That's what I was just looking at that I said I can't put on stream. Um, I went to Kirio because in 1114, <laughs> 114p, he, like, he looks like Kai. Yeah, we do, we've, we've got similar body structures. Let's just put it that way. Um, no Sven, only because copyright issues, um, DMCA stuff, I, unless it's guaranteed to be not owned by anybody and a part of anything, like it has to be a stream safe song, which there's very few. Yeah, um, that's why like a lot of streamers use things like pretzel rocks and other uh, other sort uh, other services for stream safe music that way we know youtube and twitch both won't dmca us for it yeah um willie who's curio i only know a youtube channel on their stream but i can't imagine you misgender them uh no 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 uh the obscure curio curio is a person um jordan is his actual name <coughs> um he's um i describe him as a vaudevillian comedy anecdotes music uh, obscure, like, you know, esoteric, uh, things, um, skits, um, yeah, curio, and we go 
before Twitch. Yeah. Um, we were on the same podcast network. Um, Curios, amazingly good people. Um, and so, yeah. I liked Curio immediately because he called me a Ponzi twat. <laughs> a twat. Um, A 12 of 13, the only curio. The obscure curio. Uh, he's not, Lily. He's not. He just, his stream ended. Um, it may come back intermittently. Not this year, though. Um, yeah. He, he still does podcasts. He still does YouTube. But he, he does not stream anymore. Um, and we, a couple weeks ago, we had a send-off. I took the night off. Um... The OGs fucking lined up, and we were on voice chat with him for the night, and we all <sighs> we all had a good weep. We all had a good weep. Let's just put it that way. Um, it was sad. There were lots of tears. There were, there were. Um, yeah, like you can see me getting fucklent. Just, just thinking about it. Trust me. There was a, um, there was a really, really nice song put together, like of like just all of us, like listeners and old timers and stuff, saying nice things that Mitre put together about Curio, and we played it on the way out. And oh shit, we were all just weeping. Yeah. Um. Transit Gloria Mundi. <laughs> oh. Let's see. Oh, hang on. Yeah, Levit Cleos. Uh, Levit Cleos, uh, welcome to the Discord server. Uh, I saw that just pop. Um, be sure to do the uh, the landing page stuff, Levit, um, or else you won't see the rest of the server. Um, fucking redacted. Dude, redacted. Let's see, it's 2,000, 2,000 a pop. How many points do you have redacted? Are you earning at a rate that you're spending redacted? <laughs> you just, you're burning them. I respect it. No accumulation of wealth. I respect it. Uh, y'all, y'all damn near had me balling, and I don't even know the man. Yeah, it was. Also, also a Mitre banger. Making fun of Has, fucking infrared. Thank you, Redacted. I, I suspect it, but thank you. Oh, no. No, not even. I'm not even looking at that. No, I'm gonna look at that ref. I don't need to cry on the stream. Yeah, that that would <clears throat> that'd be a bit much. <laughs> yeah, these good people. It's a good place to hang out. Uh, you know, yeah. Um. 
So this is a this is a fun headline. Black ex Tesla employee awarded more than one million dollars after company fails to stop supervisors from calling him the N word. Who would have guessed, guys? The company helmed by the Saf- uh, South African gem- apartheid gem mine heir is um got some racial issues amongst their ranks. I, you, by the way, how do we know about the emerald thing? Um, at this point, I'm not even sure. And I'm fine with just hitting him with it, even if it's not true. He's a shit human being. I'm okay with it. Fair. Um, and and based off of what Ninja has told us, like, or I'm sorry, told me, um, yeah, he really is a shit human being. <laughs> like he's he's just he's a horrible, horrible human being. And everybody who works up close with him is just like kind of permanently twitchy from like dealing with his insanity um shocked shocked i say um yeah like fuck that guy (laughs) that's that's all i got fuck that guy i i honestly don't care if it's if it's a half truth or a, a fucking lie at this point He's such a shit human being based off of his union busting, his fucking overworking, his sociopathic demands of, of those that work up close with him. That it's like, you know what? Whatever. Yeah, uh, Willie said the info basically comes from his father without proof, but yeah, he deserves he deserves it whether it's true or not. <laughs> um <laughs> uh, Yeah, he's, he's just, you know, fuck that guy. Um, oh, and uh, Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos, and Michael Bloomberg have teamed up to form a joint, a joint venture to drill for about $1.4 trillion worth of estimated, uh, estimated $1.4 trillion worth of rare natural resources for electric car batteries uh, in and around Greenland's pristine land. Well, they, they can really cool whoever they want. Yeah. Um, so, you know, look forward to that uh, ecological disaster in the future. Oh, and... Um, <clears throat> Mark Bernier or Bernier, I don't know how he says his fucking name, but he's a conservative radio host uh, here in the U.S. Um, last month, he he infamously said that the U.S. is acting like Nazis uh, while uh, by engaging in our vaccine efforts. Um, he's hospitalized with COVID right now. We'll see if he survives the week. And nothing of value was lost. Yep, that's dude. That's a phrase that keeps popping in my head a lot of day, a lot of times these days. It's just, yeah, nothing of value there. <laughs> you redacted. I'm rooting for the COVID. Um, hey, 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 the COVID is a is roughly a form of life, right? Like, pro-life, right? Isn't that what we're supposed to be? We're supposed to be pro-life? Like, you know, it has a right to a right to multiply and do its thing, too. Um, he, he, I don't know, like, just because it has taken up residence in his body doesn't mean he has the right to eliminate it, right? Like, um, I wish no harm and shed no tears. So we're saying, I, I, you know, it's natural. Exactly, Ryder. It's fucking natural. Um, it's, the, it's the will of God, obviously. 100%. 100%. Um, yeah, oh, yeah. Gemma, that's the... Yeah, true, true, Gemma. That is, yeah, these aren't full-on Darwin Awards most of the time. That's the problem. So they're not falling out of the gene pool like it, 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 before they produce. It's after they reproduce, which is boo. Right? Like that's that's no use to us. Oh, sorry. Um, 
COVID has ruined the last year of my life. Fuck COVID. Yeah, Chris, you actually caught it. Like, Chris is fucking dealing with, like, post-COVID shit. Um. Uh, let's see. Hold on. I'm just doing a thing here. Oh, for fuck's sake. Really, Twitch? Really? Visible. So, when we do our... When we do a raid preview... Um, like, we can click the channel to preview uh, when we raid out to them. Twitch plays ads for the streamers. Why? Why? Are you not attempting to facilitate sh to show, like, potentially hundreds, maybe even thousands of ads to people? Why are you getting in the way of the raid? Why are you playing ads in that cycle? It, it's, it's absolutely asinine, some of the, dis like, design decisions that they do, like, that they, they, they make. Like, what the fuck? We're going to M3. We're going to Australia, y'all. We're going to go over to Hammer. Um, Add first design. Yeah, you're telling me. Um, hey, well, lot of just in time for the ears. Yes. Um, they'll come back as a channel point redemption, well, Lotta. They'll ch they'll come back as a channel point redemption. So, tomorrow is Bad Movie Night Friday. We're doing Neil Breen. We're going back to the beginning. We're fucking watching the first two movies. Nonsense is going to be there. Oh, I can't wait to show him that. Um, everybody else, take care of yourselves. For two, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for having me. Everyone have a good rest of your day, night, time zone. Yes. Uh, everybody else, I'll catch you tomorrow. And if I don't, I'll catch you the next time I see you. Hope you will as you can be. Till next time, guys. All right.